Support for this episode of The Fighter and the Kid comes from the official electric razor of the UFC, Manscaped. You see it all over the octagon, man. Their mission is to ensure all of us keep our balls clean with their luxury grooming tools because everyone knows when you trim the hedges, the tree stands taller. The Lawnmower 3.0 trimmer offers a ceramic blade and skin safe technology designed to reduce nicks or tugs on your nuts. And you're below the belts. You can now shave your balls without the anxiety of slicing your sack. Nobody likes that, man. Show support for this podcast. Your balls and one of the biggest brands that support the world of MMA by checking out their website. In fact, you know what? How about I give you a 20% off and free shipping on all their products with the code FIGHTER20 at manscaped.com. Get 20% off and free shipping with the code FIGHTER20 at manscaped.com. That's 20% off with free shipping at manscaped.com. Use code FIGHTER20. Your balls will thank you. Whose car is the kid car? My girls. Because I have the, the, the Porsche. Oh, you can't put them in that. No, you can't. They can't there's, even, there's no seats. Right. It has a goddamn race roll cage in the back. So that eliminates that. Does her car smell like old milk and yoo-hoo's yet? Oh, yeah. Just, just sticky. Oh, every part just is sticky. sticky. Yeah. And and uh, uh, like Cheerios. Yeah, my kid eats those pink cake pops. Yeah. Like before school, we'll go to Starbucks. He gets little bagel bites. And then every now and then I give him a cake, uh, like a pink cake pop. It's yeah. his favorite thing in the world. So I'll surprise him getting that. And I, it didn't even occur to me. I'm like, oh, what's he doing with the sticks that are all sticky? Oh, dude. Over the he shoulder. puts them all. He's like stuffing, stuffing them in the seats. Because <laughs> I went to get out. I'm like, what the fuck is that? And they're like caked on. So I did him a solid because his mom would be brutal to him. I just tucked them even deeper. <laughs> just tucked them even deeper. I was like, okay. So my son, when my youngest son, Jacob, and we had a, a, a um, minivan. So you know those minivan. We had everybody in that one row in the second row. Back. Yeah. My oldest son was in the middle for a while because two car seats on the side. And he used to love to eat string cheese. But he also, what I didn't know, uh, is that he liked to leave a little bit of the string cheese left because he knew it smelled and he and he had, he liked to fuck with his little brother. And when I fuck with, he, he was just, you know, jealous like an yeah. old. He would stick the last bit of the cheese in the under the flap in his car seat oh god so it would just start to, you could like yeah you couldn't find the shit. i had no idea tight move i man. had no idea so I, one day i'm like what finally what is this i took i i was looking spilled through it spilled milk maybe yeah but there was nothing on there i'm looking underneath i had to take the cloth part out and there was this big <laughs> chunk <laughs> hilarious. Yeah. hilarious and i asked my son i go what is this he was like that's where i put the rest of my cheese tight move dude <laughs> Dude, I was trying to, because again, my my girl, are you the strict one? Yes. Yo, are you? Yeah. I'm not. I'm the furthest. Fr when it comes to sports or like school, I'm strict. In life, I'm the I'm the fun dad. Yeah. I'm the fun dad. I can tell by your bandana. Yeah, this bandana yeah, is yeah. fun guy. I'm the fun guy. <laughs> <laughs> the El Gay Bandito. Yeah, yeah, dude, when you show up at the park, they're like, oh, that dude's fun. Like, oh, he looks <laughs> fun. <laughs> How about in Salt Lake City this weekend? I'm on a bird. I saw and you. And this thing just all. <laughs> I saw you, dude. And then these girls said something. I go, we're gay. We're gay. Uh, that 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 little bike needed a bell. You dude. needed a ring. Oh, I had a bell. Oh, did you? Yeah, I had a bell. That's what we were doing. Because <laughs> they'd yell at the guys behind us. So i go, we're gay. They're like, hey, man, come on, dog. Ring, ring. But uh, yeah, I'm, I'm the cool dad. So uh, the other morning, it's like 6. We get He gets about 5.30. I go right down. I make coffee. He has like his little coffee. And I, I was doing something. I left the coffee on the couch. It's one of those like stain resistant couch, so it's all good. But it's a full mug of piping, steaming black as fucking night coffee. And he did something like I was like doing like this, and he just knocked it over. And it's a cream color couch, and it just, uh. I mean, it fucking graffitied this couch. Just, whoosh, and I was like, oh my god, you fucked up, dude. And he's like, what? And he's all, he, you know, he starts tearing. I'm like, yeah. chill out. It's not I'll Papa. Clean it up. Don't be scared. So I clean it up, and you can tell there's some coffee. And I go, you do not tell your mom you spilled this. Tell say Dad did it. And he's like, oh, okay, Papa. I tell that. As soon as she comes down, Dad spilled coffee. Yeah. I'm like too much, <laughs> too much, dude. Yeah. Like, too much. And then kept going. I didn't do it. I go, dude, yeah. take it down a notch. You're, not so You're out of ten. I need yeah. you out of five, yeah. Bubba. This is so obvious. And my girl, she was looking at me like. The you know what they they also children are inherently snitches. 
Yeah. They can't oh wait to rat on you. If you do something, you're oh like, hey, God. hey, don't tell your mom. As soon they can't as soon as they're getting to the door, da, 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 they well, can't now, wait. Well, now he'll like rub my girl's face, which gets him more trouble. He's trying to figure it out because he's not allowed to have anything until he eats a real meal. And we have this jar of Oreos, and me and him love Oreos. Mm -hmm. So I want one. Well, I can't eat one and, and not give him one. So I'll get two out and then I'll go by my girl, you know, and like hide it behind. Then I'll go and I go, shh, and I go, shh. And then he'll get it, and then go, Mama. Uh, I'm like, you're, <laughs> fine, dude. you're a goddamn snitch. Let me ask you. I can tell you, okay, two of the grossest things that my kids did, and your kids may be a little too young for this. So one, and they're both my daughter, by the way. My daughter was. I don't think I've met your daughter. Maybe not. She lives in um, uh, Pasadena. She's a vet assist out there. So here's my two favorite things. Both gross. But she was the grossest and the funniest and the smartest. And how old is she now? 26. Dude, she, you know what she said to me at the beach? Because the difference between girls and boys also is that girls will say they don't give a fuck about your feelings. Mm. Especially teenage girls. We were at the beach and we're just hanging around. Obviously, I'm shirtless at the beach. And she and walks how by old? me. She, at the time, probably 17. Mm. She just walks by me and she looks at me and she goes, nice titties. Oh God! And I go, no, no, no! I go, these are pecs, and she goes, maybe they used to be, but they're titties, <laughs> titties. now. And I was like, it's oh, fucked come up, on, man! It's fucked up. So she, I know that's the tough one too, because all day you're looking, oh, there, you're like, God up. damn it! <laughs> oh no, I've had, I've, I've had my kid Tiger when he got a shower, he'll like grab me, I'm like, Dad, why do you have a belly? Yeah, like, dude, it's fucked up, dude. <laughs> when Jacob was like, you know, when they're young, like up to three or four, they'll take a shower with you. you yeah. Know? And so we were one day, we were in the shower, and he was just squinting and looking at my dick. hilarious and um i went to put a washcloth over it he goes no no wait 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 and i go what's going on man and he goes daddy your penis is bigger than mine and i told him i go hey just so you know no matter how how, how old the other person is who says that yeah it's always nice to hear that <laughs> yeah. i told him oh i go but do me a favor don't squint yeah don't yeah, yeah don't, you don't need yeah that's a that's a eager, <laughs> yeah, it's so yeah. strange man <laughs> Because kids are not, the, the best part is they're so fucking honest. Yeah, dude. Are you the, uh, when you say you're the dis disciplined one, especially then, would you would you spank them? Were you a spanker? So, you know, when I was a single dad, I had to do both. But, but when I was single, it was more important. The discipline was way more important because I didn't know if I was ever going to be together with somebody. And I was like, okay, it's me, three kids. We need to run a tight ship here. And my you have to, otherwise it's chaos. Yes. And my theory was also, as a parent, I'm going to be way more strict when they're young. Maybe even some people would say too strict. Because as a teenager, I don't want to have to worry about the discipline part. Yeah, they sure have the foundation. I want to worry about, hey, let's make sure you get through this as pain-free as possible, but also living like a teenager. But I don't want to have to worry about discipline and your regular life stuff. Yeah. So I was, I always... I was not a spanker, but look, man, when Jacob... Sometimes you gotta slap a motherfucker. I, kids need to be... All three of my kids needed to be disciplined in different ways. But they weren't scared of you. Not like, I was scared of my dad. They weren't scared, but they knew 100% if I said something, that's what was happening. They better do it. That's what was happening. So it wasn't, it wasn't like, hey, go clean up your room or else. It was go clean up your room. That was the one warning. Yeah. And then the it's a respect thing. Yeah, that's the way 100%, to go. 100%. I, I always used to say, like, my friends with kids, I'd be like, oh, you know, my dad hit me. So, you know, I know all the studies say not to hit him, stuff like that. And I was like, when I have kids, I'm going to hit him. Dude, dude. It's because my girl grew up strict Mexican, strict yeah. fucking Mexican. And she'll want to hit a kid. And the first time Tiger did something, she went to hit him. I fucking dove in front. I was like, no. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Like I take it for yeah. me. Yeah. Like I, I'm like I, I can't. It's like the papa beer comes out. It's triggering. It's, even even if it's his grandma, if it's his mom, don't hit him in front of me, man. It's different. Then dude. we're gonna fight. And it's not physically, but we're gonna get an altercation verbally because I, I don't want you to hit my kid. Because now there's like there's 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 science out there that yeah. says ah, kids actually don't learn when you hit them. That's I, not what they do. I don't think they learn, man. I, when you hit them, I think if you're trying to to make a point maybe but i do think every kid needs to be disciplined differently jacob my youngest all you got to do is raise your voice he was so 
broken and and he would feel so bad about himself and his biggest fear was disappointing me my daughter you could yell at her all day and she'd be like is that it yeah that's all that's all you're doing like teflon yeah would would, would would why was why is jacob like that does I mean, he have issues now with it you know he, what i'm saying because some, sometimes you see those issues because my brother had to they had to hit his ass like with belts and spoons right because he didn't because respond to anything else nothing i mean and he nothing and i just think that's that, listen i do believe that every kid needs to be disciplined differently i don't think none of my kids needed to be spanked but i have been physical yeah and but what i mean by physical is i want that there were times my oldest son i needed to remind him who was strong who's in charge yep so because they're gonna test you so my hands might be on him and he could feel my strength see what's up yeah. i just want him to know and i would get down at his level yeah so we're eye to fucking eye yeah and he could feel my hands on his shoulders so he knew hey man i'm not fucking around you did something right though i mean they're great kids. they're great kids they're great know? kids but is there anything worse when like i was on a plane yesterday and the lady in front of me had her kid he's probably three and so I, you know, I have a four year old and I have an uh, eight month old. I get it what the mom's dealing with, traveling by herself. But this kid's, you know, just, you can tell there's no discipline going mm -hmm. on. Yelling, like mm -hmm. screaming, but not like crying, just doing it to, because he thought it was fun. And the mom's not saying anything. He's throwing the apple juice all over the other seats. I'm like, how do you not address can't. this? You can't do how that. How do you not? I, I, you know, for me, <clears throat> excuse me, I actually, uh, I traveled, you know, how I'm an old dude. So when my kids were young, we were traveling pre-internet, cross-country, pre-phone, any of that stuff. So I would fly across country with three young kids with books. And you. And by the way, I, I'm lying a little bit because I used to give them Benadryl before every flight. Type move, though, My too. son used to call it the juice. Can we get the juice? <laughs> the like, you juice. Know, yeah. <laughs> what kind of juice are you talking you about know here? We can, yeah, man. Yeah. But um, I wanted to tell you, because I'm curious what, you, what it is for your son. So my daughter did two, the grossest things, and kids are gross. I'm gonna tell you her two grossest things. You tell me if your son has. She's come gonna close. hate you for saying this story. She's she knows I tell it. First yeah. of all, she used to have a booger wall behind her bed. That's tough. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's tough. That's tough. Yeah, there was a booger wall. We didn't know until we Certain moved. Her. Kids are booger kids. We, knew, we moved her bed, and She's she would pick her kid. nose and 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 booger wall it. I wonder and, what that is. I don't know. Why is it on the wall, man? Yeah, you know it's what I'm strange. saying. Yeah. It's like that gum wall in Seattle. Yeah, the booger yeah. wall was no good. But my favorite thing that she, okay, so obviously when i was we were very poor i was we were living in one room i think i made twelve hundred dollars a month it was me and the three kids jesus dude in hollywood so you know that jesus, what that gets dude. you right so once a month we would plan a go out and go out to dinner there was but knowing full well dinner means we're all drinking water and nobody gets dessert but we can go out yeah right so but the way we would do dessert is i would go to 7-eleven and so i could get for 99 cents everybody could get a dessert that they liked my daughter always picked gum because she was smarter than my bro than my sons. <laughs> gum lasted, and she would sell her pieces of gum to the brother. Oh, tight move. Yeah, dude. She like a 12 pack. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah so tight smart. Move. Yeah. Well, one night we're at PF Chang's. And um, we're sitting there about to pay bill, and she's chewing gum. And I go, babe. I said, uh, you I'm surprised because we, we didn't have money to go to 7 Eleven this time. I go, I'm so surprised that you saved your gum good good for you she goes oh i, I didn't say this this is pf chang's gum and i was like hey, what do you mean she goes this is where i always get the gum of pf chang's like what are you talking about she goes they leave it for you under the table so she would take the oh, gum hilarious. that somebody chewed and oh, put hilarious. and take oh. it she thought pf chang's chewed it and left, left it, it there for her. she's like they just yeah, yeah. Oh my God. <laughs> and we were all even my oldest son <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> dude that night she went for a good night kiss. I'm like, I'm a yeah, pass You know tonight. what? We're gonna hard pass. Yeah, <laughs> dude, it's nuts. Like, you imagine? But I told her, I go, you're either gonna be the healthiest person ever because your every, immune system's through the roof. Through the roof. I have a black plague. Or you're gonna be dead by the end. Yeah. Of the or night. Otherwise, you're yeah, gonna yeah. die. Yeah. Fourteen. <laughs> yeah, it's weird, man. But I think kids growing up on on a budget, like having like realizing how hard you work, yeah, and like trying to make ends meet, so much better than. Then we kind of, you know what my kids are dealing with, where they don't realize, like, Amazon, oh, I want this toy. It shows up the next day. Did you grow day. up with money? No. So that's... So we go to Chili's, and, you know, I was a fat kid, and I loved the full rack of ribs and the chocolate shake. I knew my mom was paid if she, she didn't have a problem with it. If we'd sit down and go, I'm getting the, the ribs and the shake, which, you know, at Chili's, especially back then, it's like, Jesus Christ, yeah. dude. 
My mom's like, no, you're not. We're going, it's chicken fingers and you and your brother splitting it. And I'm like, oh, mom didn't get paid. Yeah, I could tell when we didn't have money too. Um, and and it's, it's triggering for me now. Like if someone talks about money or being broke, it's super triggering. And like shoes too. Like I remember we were at a, it must have been like a Ross or something. They had these these earwalks. And me and my brother won. We were begging my mom, crying. She's like, I don't have the money. Yeah. And I feel so bad about it now because we we're begging my mom to buy the shoes. She's like, I literally can, don't have the money. Can bro. you imagine? <clears throat> so now that you're a parent, I remember saying that to my kids. It's so... At, at the same time, when you're older now, as I'm older, I look back and I go, I'm glad they had that experience. I'm glad that they know that things aren't free and everything doesn't come easy but at the time as a parent i can't it's imagine one of the most dude i will tell you one of the hardest five minutes of my life i was on something called wick which is basically a food program here in california where you can get it's like food stamps if you have young kids you can get uh formula and things sure. like that right so i had my wick stuff and um i was at rouse and man it was i used to go to ralph's during off hours so there weren't that many people there mm -hmm. or maybe i didn't see somebody i knew and there was a woman behind me and she was just trying to be nice and she was like let me pay for that for you Fuck. it was the i i i was like no Oof. i said it's hard enough for me to do this yeah i can't have a stranger i know do you know what i mean like i know and i would by the way if i'm her i offer the same thing without realizing how it makes that other person feel. I've done the same thing where I offered to, I saw this mom with a kid, I could, I could just tell the kid looked dirty, the mom didn't have all his shit together. And I was like, let me, I'll, I'll and I, 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 I fucked up cause I, you know, I, in my head I'm like, I'll pay for her stuff. It's gonna give her a huge break and I bet she can save the money, do something else with it. And she's like, we're not, you know, the food's going through. I went, I'll, you know what, just I'll cover hers, just charge that and then charge mine. She goes, no, no, no. No yeah. thanks. It's hard. And I was like, "What a dick!" And I was thinking, like, "Oh, yeah. it's an ego thing. It's less. E it's so Don't much you think about it's like an ego and like pride. Pride. Because at the end of the day, man, I still want to feel like, I, I mean, like a man isn't the right word, but I still want to feel like provider. Yeah, yeah. Like, like, and now I can't even do that. Oh, I know, dude. And it, it was, it was really. There was a lot of real at the time. This is going to sound real weird. At the time, I was like, I can't wait. I hope this is over. I'll do anything to get out of this situation. But I look back and I think, I'm so glad I went through that. Yeah, I bet. I really am so glad I went through that. And n no, having kids now and dealing with what I deal with. And then my, I remember my mom, she would be like, We're starving, mama. We, we didn't have food. We're like, We're starving. <clears throat> She'd write a check and it would bounce. Yeah. To feed us. Yeah, dude. I. I will get when I start talking about this too. I, I try. It's heart. It's heartbreaking, and I think about it, and it's heartbreaking to know that there are people all around dude, who are dude. hitting that right now, dude. And I, I can only tell you from my experience from doing that. You know, there were. I would sometimes look at the week and go, "Okay, the first two days of this week are going to be one meal days for me." I'm doing one meal. The kids are going to, yep. I'm going to break that one meal into three for them, yep. but I'm going to eat lunch, right? And to have to navigate that, and I, I was so, conf so concerned about the kids, right? And so I remember I talked to my dad, and my dad was like, they'll only know you're poor if you let them know. If you let them know that this is a shitty situation. You're poor, yeah. yeah. He said, now when they get older and they go to school, especially in LA, <sighs> but as a young person, he said tell me what what is at the time jacob was like too he's like what is jacob's favorite toy and i'm like honestly if you gave him an empty refrigerator box and two balloons it's on that's it yeah and he was like just remember that i know it's not the amount of when you go to these big parties and they're they have ponies for their kids and birth the truth of the matter is the kids would have just as much fun at a certain age doesn't matter doesn't matter yeah i remember my dad that's why I'm so into Broncos. He had this Bronco that he bought. Worked his my dad worked his fucking tail off. He was like suit, pursuit of happiness. He'd go door to door selling mm -hmm. all the shit. Then he bought, had this Bronco. It was used, but it was a two door Bronco, and it was tan. And I remember he had his brother worked in cars, and he had the decals put on so it looked like an Eddie Bauer version. He put the Eddie Bauer seats in it, and I thought it was 
the do- I was like, we're so rich. So I'm like, Papa dropped me off at school and I get out like, what's up? And the kid's yeah. like, what? <laughs> what's up? <laughs> <laughs> Listen, dude. Like, dude, is that a two-door Ford Bronco? Can, like, yeah, it is, dude. Can I tell what's you something? Now, <laughs> can I tell you something? What's up now? <laughs> so when I, when I, or I, I got, wasn't with pictures, you know, but I'm all. <laughs> I do have pictures of me washing it. I used to wash it all the time. But what, so when the, the new Broncos coming out, I, I was like, dude, can I get it in tan? Because I'm gonna, I want to do the same thing. Like, that's super cool like we don't offer tan dumbass like that makes sense yeah why would yeah. you yeah when but i when, could do it i could have someone do it when my when we were growing up this is when i thought my dad ended up with money we went from no car we had to borrow a car to go shopping and our neighbor who we borrowed the car from get ready for this dick move was like sure you can borrow the car to go shopping but your kids have to clean my house oh god come what on, a dude di- come on bro come Right? God. What a dick move. Okay. But I will tell you, by the way, the, you know what the trigger for me is? Because when, you know, I could tell when my parents had a little bit of money because the potato chips in the cabinet didn't just say potato chips. You know, we used Lays? to go to this place called Price Chopper. Yeah. And Price Chopper, it would just say beer. And you know what I mean? Potato like macro, chips. Like we used to get, we didn't get mac and cheese. It was a black and white box and say macaroni and cheese dinner. Yeah. And it was black and white. Like, <laughs> this looks bootleg. Yeah. Where's like the cool dragon in blue and yellow? Yeah. yeah. Uh, where's Nemo? Yeah. What the <laughs> fuck, man? There's I, none of that. Dude, I remember when my Hamburger dad. Helper. A, when my dad got a job and we got, ready for this? We thought we were fancy. We got a brand new Honda Accord. Maroon. Oh, oh yeah. no, maybe Burgundy. Burgundy. But when you're a kid, it's like new car. It oh. could be. Might as well be a Lamborghini. Come on, dude. That's a new car. On the Accord was. And it's strange. Fresh. But your kids now, I'm sure they appreciate it more than ever, right? Because like do. Jacob's like hustling, right? Jacob is hustling, man. He's out on the road right now on an Amazon Prime show um, as a PA, but he's traveling to all the national parks. You know, my oldest son is in the army. Yep. And my daughter is a vet assist. Yo, my daughter, ready for this? My daughter used to live deep in the valley, so off of White Oak. She had an internship, unpaid internship, in Santa Monica at a vet. She had to take two buses that took two hours there and two hours back to get her to a non-paid internship because without going to school, that was the only place in the field that she wanted that would give her a chance. Yeah, And And that hustle... Nuts. Right? There are a lot of people we know... Grown people who are like, nah, I'm not doing oh, that. Oh, hell no. So, yeah. like, uh, there are certain things that I feel like they, I truly believe kids learn more from watching us than from I listening. I agree. Set an example. Yeah. That's what my dad did. Don't you think? Yeah. Like, my dad wasn't a verbal dude, but I learned from watching. I agree. Kat, your parents were strict, right? Oh, super strict. I wasn't allowed to leave the For house. For birthday, like they gave 18. her, like, sunlight. Yeah. Let her out for like <laughs> three days. They Wait. didn't beat my ass and they gave me sunlight. Yeah. It was a great day. Strict, like uh, you needed certain grades, you had to be in a certain time. Yes. These were your chores. Yes. And Everything also regimented. was not allowed out, wasn't allowed to have friends until I was like 18. No <laughs> contact with like the outside Did world. Did anyone ever sleep over? No. no. No, absolutely not. Did you have brothers and sisters? Uh, I had one younger sister at the time and then a baby brother when I was a little older. And could could you could you have a boyfriend or no? Oh, no. I wasn't even allowed to, like, look at boys. I couldn't. I used to get my ass beat when I was, like, in third grade. I would go up to my mom, like, oh, I think there's a cute boy in school. His name is, like, Ben. And I got my ass beat so bad. Weird. And from that day on, I acted like I didn't even know what boys were. I was like, who? Huh? Yeah. Wait, what? what? So you had, did you have friends when you were in school? Did you people? Uh, well, they were more, like acquaintances slash classmates but yeah i wasn't necessarily allowed to have friends did you go to college yes and so when you got to college because usually people under that lock and key oh, yeah. they when they go. get to college they're like oh, let's uh, go uh, everybody uh, uh, yeah, you know what i mean there was some more there was there was a mormon girl that i went to school with there was a mormon girl i went to school with who like look when she came that first day of orientation she was like i'm mormon and by halloween she was having anal sex in a gorilla costume oh yeah yeah <laughs> and rightfully so yeah, yeah man because she was all ass yeah, yeah. 
It's just like that's yeah. what happened when parents are that. Did you I go like crazy it. when you got to college? No, I think because my family, uh, everyone in my family partied so much that I was around partying a lot. Like at and your so house? when I got yeah. So like my uncles, my cousins all partied like crazy. And because of that, my mom was super strict on me. So I was around it and didn't really I wasn't into it luckily, but Is your sister yeah. your sister gets good grades and shit? Yeah. She is very similar to me. We're not big on partying or anything. And then your were your parents strict, Jen? Yep. But not like it's like an Asian culture thing though. Like yeah, you never hear like, like loosey mom. goosey <laughs> Korean parents. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like not as strict as hers though. Like, have you ever heard of like, a, like, like you know, <laughs> like no Korean parents gonna buy alcohol for the sixteen-year-old party? Never. You know? Lucy Goosey. Goosey. Never. No, dude. Kareem. No, you're Never. right. Never. Yeah. <laughs> it's a tough gig, man. Yeah, I. But that's why you guys are so successful. When you think about it. I have a lot of trauma, but yeah, very successful. <laughs> yeah, Kat has a lot of baggage. But <laughs> Wait, so you got on full. <laughs> your first boyfriend? How old were you? Uh, I was 14. I didn't tell my mom about it. And I ended up with that guy until I was like 24. Oh. I was like with him now. forever. She's 25. Yeah. Oh, you dated somebody for 10 years. Yeah. And then that was the only dude. Yeah, that was the only dude at the time. And did he meet your family? No. Never. <laughs> Never. <laughs> and all the time. He would meet some of my cousins, Holy but there was something shit. about like me dating him when I was 14 that I was still too afraid to bring him around my parents, even though I was... 24 grown had a career graduated wow. college where did you guys hang out if you weren't allowed to leave the house um i would sneak out a lot and then i would also tell my parents that i would be taking like extra curricular classes because yeah. i went to community college and was like i need to do everything i need to get to a good school so i need to do all these extra things yeah. i would leave the house at like six go visit him sign up for community college classes that were online and pretend that i was at class and then we went to USC. It was, yeah. He lived in the dorms and he was free to come or not? Uh, I did long distance, <laughs> so he would come visit me every now and then. Jeez Wait, so you, you not only did you, you actually took extra classes at the community college? Uh, I did, but they were all online. I was very <laughs> Asian about it. I did all the loopholes. <laughs> very Asian about it. <laughs> very I mean, Asian. so I, listen, let me tell you something. Anybody who thinks you can keep your teenage girl or boy away from the opposite sex, we just heard a story of somebody... <laughs> going to a different school just to get dick yes. go it's signing <laughs> up for college courses yes. because there was and that, that it could be like if i know if i was in high necessary. school if you told me in high school hey listen you're not going to be able to uh, see a vagina or boobs unless you take some more classes i'd be like yeah yeah take what a class well, what, what are we doing english <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> what, what, whatever, I, whatever i'm yeah. on board for yeah. that mm -hmm. you can't that's why when I that's why that foundation is so important you they're gonna do what they want to do yes that's exactly right so I always figured you start them early you get them and not, I don't mean strict probably like your parents were but my no. I needed my kids to know if I say don't do this that they're not gonna do it because we've already established the or else is yeah, going to happen not good right I I really do think though you have to parent not in an ideal deal like not what your ideal world is you can't say well i don't want my kids to drink so they're never gonna drink unrealistic unrealistic and then then as soon as they turn 16 I'm like i'm jones in for a drink yeah like so you have to decide what is the best way not to encourage them to drink and not to be like yeah i know you're gonna drink so here's a bottle of tequila yeah. but what's the way to parent realistically so you can navigate through the waters like I would tell, first of all, for me, the idea of a curfew, to start off with a curfew, wasn't the way to go. Really? I would say, this is what I said to my kids, because this worked for me with my parents. I would say, don't be stupid. Don't push my trust. Come home at a time that seems reasonable. And I would leave it. On them? On them. Tell what, me. What time would they come home? Tell me what you think is reasonable. And I would say, I would say, what do you think is reasonable? And if he was like 4 a.m., I was like, you think 4 a.m. is reasonable? Yeah, you're, you're goddamn right. Because 4 a.m., if you start coming over 4 a.m., you're going to get a curfew. Yes. And it's going to be a curfew you don't like. Yep. So tell me, as long as you're not taking advantage of what I think. I like that. Right? So I would leave it to them. And if they made the mistake, I could always go. And I wouldn't yell. I'd go, let me show you the mistake. I told you reasonable. Yeah. I gave you this chance. You decided 6 a.m. was reasonable. Now it's up to me to make the rule. And would you stay awake till they came home? Um, that was my issue. I knew my, it, my dad gave me a curfew of 12 and then sometimes like, Hey dad, can I come home at 1230? But I knew he was staying up. Yeah. He's not a late bird. 
So I knew I was kind of fucking him over. I stayed out real late. And I didn't want to do yeah. that. But sometimes I'd push it. I didn't. I didn't stay awake mostly because I'm pretty high every night. <laughs> you <You'd> pass out. <laughs> yeah, but my wife is a very light sleeper, so she would wake up. But for me, it goes back to personal responsibility. I'm going to give you the chance to be responsible. I think back then, though, like parents were giving kids more of a leash. Like now, I think because we know how scary the world is, and we have social media, and news is in our face twenty four seven. Like and you get the worst of the worst. Like I'm, tr- it, like I have to constantly tell myself not to be a helicopter parent. I mean, I am, dude. It's on them like a fucking. I don't blame personal you. bodyguard all the time. But think about this: the helicopter parents, to me, the biggest thing they do, which is dangerous, is they take your kid's ability to make decisions and to problem solve away and learn. So when I'm giving him the responsibility, which is you don't have a curfew, but don't be stupid. What do it's you on think? Them. What do you think is reasonable? Yeah. Look at your friends. Look at what their curfew is. Look what's happening. Look who the fuck ups are. Yeah. And, and be responsible. And I, but I would do like, that. Do you want to be like Eddie, the the guy who we know is, that he's not yeah. going in? By the way, as soon as you say Eddie, we know that kid. Yeah. We know. Yeah. yeah. Do you want to be like Troy? <laughs> like you know? Yeah. Yeah. But so I think I think the biggest mistake parents make now is they, man, when you get on the playground, and. At school, and someone's like, if something happens to you, run and tell your teacher. You've already told your kid you don't know how to solve this problem. Have someone else deal for it. Man, if I'm on a playground, and honestly, and even if it ends in a fight, I've, got, I've, I've started to resolve problems myself. I'm not 21 years old, and I have an issue, and I've never solved this issue, so I have to call my fucking dad. I know. Yeah, like I took my son to this. It's kind of a dodgy play area thing, and there was this other Mexican, you know, my son's half Mexican, there's this other Mexican kid there. I could just tell he was a problem, man. Yeah. I was like, ah, oh, well, we're here. I paid for it. There's other kids. Hopefully, he just avoids them. And they're like playing with seeing the kid push Tiger. Tiger looks at me. I'm like, oh. and then they keep playing. The kid pushes him again. So I go, Tiger, come here, come here. And I see, and the dad, right? The guy, the dad knows who I am. Yeah. I can see the dad telling the other dads, like, pointing. I'm like, all right. And so I tell Tiger, I go, Tiger, come here. Tiger goes, that kid keeps pushing me. I go, I'm not going to deal with it, dude. If that kid pushes you again, tell him to stop. If he continues to do it, you have, there's going to be zero repercussions. Yes. You can push him back or hit him. Yeah. But what you're not going to do is run to me or run to whoever runs this fucking gym. If he keeps pushing, you got to fight back. Otherwise, he's going to do it the entire time we're here, Tiger. The entire time. And I think the dad saw me, saw me tell him that and then was like, hey, Told, told the kids like, hey, you don't fuck with that kid. But because I'm telling you, man, that's the right way. But uh, what's good is Tiger has like he's super, like he cares about everyone. He cares about everyone's feelings. So they, the teacher tells him all the time, like if a girl like f- fell down or another kid hit her with a toy, Tiger would come over and make sure she's okay. Like he takes care of everybody. That's awesome, dude. It's good, but at the same time too, you don't want to be the pushover because they're like we. What we'd like is Tiger to fight more for what he believes in so if tiger's playing with a toy and a kid comes up and takes it tiger's like uh whatever dude and go get another toy she's like we'd like it if you'd fight back a little bit because we don't want kids just to be steamrolling them so i tell him like dude you gotta fight like you just can't give it up so easy dude i i agree with that it's a weird dynamic because i don't want to be like hey sock every kid that gives you problems you want you want he's a giant (laughs) for you like excuse me sir they did tell me the yeah. other day, like any chance he gets with his buddy Harrison, any time we're like, okay, free time, wherever they're at, they start wrestling. That's hilarious. Yeah, they, he just starts wrestling. Uh, uh, but uh, the, what you're doing is right, though, right? Because now you're you're teaching your son. I'm not always going to be here to solve this problem. I know for you. it's such a weird dynamic. You, there are some problems you have to solve. Yes, but I truly believe in the laws of the playground. I do. I do. Oh, you learn so much. So much. Like I think, I th- obviously, the parents need to be at the playground, but they need to stay on the side. Did you have a brother? You had brothers. Three right? older brothers. Three, see, I had an older brother, and I didn't have to go tell my dad or my mom, but my brother had awful anger management, it, the worst you've ever seen, <laughs> because my parents were divorced. So when someone fucked me, I was like, "Ooh, you fucked up. Ooh, you fucked up." Oh, was you your better, brother coming? Yeah, I was like you better <laughs> pray to God, Jaden. See, you pushed me down this. Oh my God! And then my brother, my brother, he lived to fight. Like he lived, he like he had a real issue. He had to go to therapy for it for a number of years. He loved to fight. So I remember we had wife. Was he a good fighter? The best. Like horrible. Like he's a because he he's wanted a big dude. Big right? dude. Because yeah. 
you know, to, to him, he would like he 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 wants to kill you, which is a problem. So <laughs> a huge problem. Which is a problem. Oh, yeah, man. Yeah, that's a problem. Yeah, because I remember we were at YMCA summer camp. But he looks so friendly. I know. I know. <laughs> <laughs> we were at YMCA summer camp, and this kid was talking shit to me, and he said something about your mom. I hear some kid instantly go, because they want to see his fight, go, ooh, he's talking about your fucking mom. I turn around to my brother. I'm like, that's yeah, your mom yeah. too, buddy. <laughs> he's like, well, you, you better do something about it. I'm like, what the fuck? Yeah, I don't want to do anything yeah. about it. <laughs> Did you just tell him mom? All he wanted to do is get that kid to start yeah. fucking me so he could fight. Like, you got problems, dude. My and then he, we got kicked out of MCA because he took a pen and kicked kids back. <laughs> dude, okay. Ready? <laughs> problems. Dude. Jacob Wolf. We got kicked out. Jacob Wolf. There was this there was this kid Gunner who used to fucking bother Jacob all the time. And um he was at this his other friend's house and they were at the dinner table. So it was him, it was Jacob, his kid Gunner, his other buddy, and I think the mom. And Gunner was giving it to Jacob. And Jacob was like, Don't stop it. And Gunner was like, What are you gonna do? And Jacob was like, How old how old are they? Jacob was probably twelve. Jacob goes, I'm gonna jam this fork into your arm. And he kind of was like, you're not going to, you're fucking, blah, blah, blah. and Jacob just took his fork and went, suck yes. <laughs> Right. <laughs> I mean. And then the mom called and goes, you're going to have to come pick up Jacob. Yeah. He just stabbed Gunner. <laughs> like, well, dude, it's like. <laughs> I was like. A little bit of that's on the parents. Yeah, like, if you know you yeah. got that shitty kid, <laughs> yeah. how do you not mention like, hey, don't be a dickhead today. How about that, dude? Guess who like, didn't. Where were the parents in all this? But guess man? who didn't fuck with Jacob anymore? That kid never fucked with him again. No, no, no. no. Now, I'm not saying you should stab people before. <laughs> but, 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 but you know what I mean? Like, yeah. There has to be, there has to be, the, the bully is like, um, the bully is like a car thief, man. So, you know those, the club you used to put on your car? Yeah. If you, uh, I Old asked, school, dude. I asked a car thief once. I go, hey, does this work? And he goes, nah, but... <laughs> Because there was a guy who used to come into my restaurant in Seattle. He was a total thief, dude. Thief, thief, just out of jail. One of these hustlers who you would just has find. all the skill sets to steal your car. Right. And I asked him, I go, you? And he goes, nah, because I was getting one. He goes, nah. He goes, but I won't, I wouldn't try to steal it. I go, why? He goes, it's an extra 15 seconds I don't need. Yeah, he'll find a car without it. It's the same thing with the bully. Yeah. Well, look, man, I could still beat the shit out of you, but I don't want the fork in the arm, too. Yeah, I'm just going to go to the kid who's yeah, not going to do I'm this. I'm going to go to the kid who's not going to do this. Yeah, it's so strange, man. So, so, like, it's such an important skill set to be able to stick up for yourself. Yeah, and my, my brother got that skill set and that horrible anger issue. He had the anger issue from my parents getting divorced. He, he was so upset. I was like, God, two rooms, two Christmases? I'm in. Yeah. But he was not. He was mad. But his issue came from... You know, he looked like, uh, you know, to use Pulp Fiction, he looked like a couple of dorks. Like yeah. he had these giant, because he loved the Chicago Bulls, which this just from fashion advice, don't get red and black glasses. Yeah. <laughs> so he had these thick red and black glasses. He had red and black braces. Mm -hmm. And then he would like wear jerseys all the time. And so he looked like a dork, but he could fight. So people would constantly fuck with him. So that's why he was always fighting. Always, always fighting. Maybe he wore that stuff because he knew it would get him into fights. <laughs> I, I like even back then I had a fashion sense because I remember he was like, "Is this what you're calling? You have fashion sense?" Yeah, I'm just yeah, curious. Right. yeah, yeah. This gay band. <laughs> yeah, I, the, the, yeah, yeah. I like the bandana with a picture of maybe you on your shirt. First team all Corona. Yeah, just yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How many color that Corona <laughs> style? Oh, I ordered so How many. many color. Uh, I ordered a pack of twenty. Off okay, Amazon. now I have. But they're crunchy, so you got to wear them so they break in. Uh, hey, I'm gonna a couple of questions for you now. Do you have? Do you now pick out sunglasses because you're like this will match my bandana? I'll pick my outfit out for sure. Yeah, yeah. That's why I got a bunch of bandanas. I'm like, well, we can't can't be too off, man. Because it's rare I put it up unless I'm you know getting coffee or something. Um, like this that. is. I mean, I I see now a couple people out on the street. You're starting a little. Yeah, a little fashion thing. Yeah, I, yeah. But I, even back then, like my brother, like you know, he had he had horrible vision. He still does. He wears contacts. Ten twenty. But I remember he needed for basketball. He my grandma bought him for him because again. You know, we didn't have money, so my grandma was like, "I'll buy you." And he needed the the rec the rec specs, the YMCA, the Kurt, the Kurt Rambis oh, ones. Oh no! Did he wear them around regular? No, he would wear them only in basketball. Okay. But they had they had like these plastic things on them. So they had these plastic things like hanging off. I think you're supposed to cut them. I was like, "You can't, you can't wear those, dude. You can't fucking wear." That's what Jay looked like. Oh <laughs> my I, god! Exactly what Jay looked like. And people would pick on him all the time, but he's really good at basketball. 
How with that body type, he was good at basketball. He was good at basketball. Yeah, he's thick now, but yeah, he used to be pretty skinny. He's really strong. Let me ask you a question. Uh, you know, um, in the the fight this weekend, I did watch. Oh, did you watch it? I watched just the main event. Yeah, I have a probably best. I have two questions for you. That and, and by the way, people listening, I'm not. I'm a. I'm an average fan. So I'm going to ask some average fan questions. Bring it. How come? So he was saying that he couldn't see out of his left eye. Mm -hmm. So as soon as you can't see out of your left eye and you're fighting arguably one of the best heavyweights of all time, yes? Yes. You know you can't win at this point. Mm, not necessarily, but also... The but your left eye is your lead. I know, and it's also where the right hand's going yeah. to come. But what do you, like, the world title's on the line, so you got to fight <laughs> through it. But also the ref fucked up. Because there's a point where Danny Cormier goes, I can't see. Right. The w the few things you never say inside that octagon, unless you have a serious issue, is if you say, I can't see, the fight should be stopped. But Immediately, D DC right? goes, I got poked in the eye, and the ref goes, now nah, is a punch, sit down, you're all right. It's like, well, you didn't see it, dude. So, so look at that. Uh, so this is what I'm saying. Like, so is it, uh, isn't he a, he's, how, he's not a young dude. No, 41. 41, so, but hold on, 41 Olympian wrestler. Uh, former Grand Prix, Grand Prix Strike Force World Champion, light heavyweight champion of the UFC, heavyweight champion of the UFC. If that guy goes, hey, dude, I got poked in the eye, I'm going to go, he got poked in the eye. That's what I'm saying. If Michael Jordan goes, hey, dude, shoot like this, I'm going to shoot like this. There's certain, you got to listen to what these fucking his, goats his are saying. His character is unquestionable. Yes. Yes, okay. one of the best of all time. But so I'm, and nobody listen, doesn't like DC. I know I'm going to hear a lot of "Hey, you pussy, man up." No, but, not at all. But at that age, at 41, mm -hmm. accomplished what he's accomplished, fighting arguably one of the best heavyweights of that all time. That fight was to decide who's going to be the best. Okay. Am I risking permanent, permanent damage without being able to see out of that lead? Yeah, eye? It's, it's happening, guys. Like Michael Bisping, he. He this he got hit with a wheel kick I think from Vitor, and it you know it ruined his eye. He was b basically blind in his eye. If he had tapped out, if he had just said, "Man, I just can't do it," would they would have stopped the fight? And I th I think Chin, I I think this they would have stopped the fight there, and then went from the score the judges from there. So DC probably would have won. Mm -hmm. so or if I, he couldn't continue, they might actually just because it is a, a legal you? thing. Yeah, if they considered a, an actual purposely, you know, poking in the eye. But right. that, but to, to 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 be fair to DC, that's probably what should have been done. But that's um, what I'm saying. Like, to, and if he says I can't go any further, look like, at is DC he being as a, called. Look at Bisbee as a fake guy, dude. It's so crazy. Is he being called a giant pussy today? No. If he says I can't go any further, I don't think so. Because when they show that replay, and it's not it's like a it, knuckle in. Because usually it's like you know this, yeah. and like oh come on, uh, dude, a knuckle. And again, you're. It's case by case. The ref should know who you're dealing with. If it's Daniel Cormier, one of the greatest to ever do it, goes, dude, I got poked in the eye. My initial reaction would be like, he really got poked in the eye. Not sit down, dude. Yeah. It was a punch. Oh, was it? How many fights have you been in, dude? Okay. It's DC, man. So here's my next question. And um, this is always fascinating to me to ask athletes this question. So now I can't see. So I'm going to ask you, First, if you were going to rank in order of importance, and let's assume everyone's a professional athlete, so if in order of importance, confidence, training, heart, and skill. When you're in that fight, now they're they're both professionals, so skill level is all around the same. Yeah. What do you, in order of importance? What what goes first? In that fight, I would say confidence because the, the, the you don't get to that level and not have heart. You don't get to that level and not have skill. I would say, if anything, the one thing that's going to waver and that's confidence. When you have one eye, your, what, so your game plan is going to be different. That's what I'm saying. The whole thing mixed up. So I'm not taking anything away from Stipe because he fought a great fight and you know DC continue on. It is what it is. But the guy's compromised when he has one eye, dude. Imagine doing anything with N one eye. No. Cover your eye like this and drive home. It's a nightmare. Dude, I tried now to- Now fight the greatest heavyweight of all time with one eye. I tried to brush my teeth. I was like, is it how hard- Oh, dude, nightmare. Yeah, yeah I, I scraped. I went in too deep. Like, I, So that's my question. So if confidence being number one in that- At that level of confidence. And I've already taken now, and now that you can't see, and you've said I can't see, I'm assuming also the other fighter's confidence goes up. Oh, yeah. Fuck yeah. So what do we do? Like, why doesn't the corner throw in a towel? Why doesn't, like, I don't understand. Because if the corner throws in the towel, then you just, you then the fight's over and you lo lost the fight. You need the ref to step in. It, and what's weird is they uh, does he have a family 
Cormier? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. So that would have been it for me, I think. I think, and again, this dude, they're, they have different DNA. Both have families. Th they have different DNA than me just being a fighter. Look, if you told me every day, hey, you're going to go to work and get punched, I'd be like, I need a new job. It's a tough gig. But on top of that, now I'm fighting somebody who could not just damage my eye, but damage my life. Especially at 41. Life. The, again, the, if you go back in time, I'm sure Mark Goddard would have stopped the fight had the doctor come in. They right. I guarantee you they would have stopped that fight. I'm fascinated by what I'm fat I'm fascinated by what keeps him fighting. Well, that's what makes him the one of the greatest of all time. Yeah. You know? You're talking about a guy who who's successful at every level. He's an Olympian. And nothing less to prove. He doesn't know anything left nothing. to prove, does he? No, he's a light heavyweight champ already. He was a heavyweight champ already. Like there's this is just cement his legacy as the greatest of all time. It's his last fight that he's gonna do. And here, here's something about DC too. He, so he used to have three kids. One of the kids passed away. Oh, no way, dude. So so that weighs on me, too. So say I'm in the ring, and now I could be not be the same person I was walking into the ring for my two kids because I can't but see. Here, to, to the other end of that, let's say he won that fight with the one eye. Then you're considered the greatest weight of all time. It's such a fascinating thing. Here's what's thing. weird about him is he's also the best analyst they have. Besides Joe Rogan, Daniel Cormier is hands down the best answer they have on deck why why he's amazing he's so good at it and he'll do it till his fucking beard grows in gray that's it he, that's his gig i don't know how much to pay him right but he's set man he has another his his whole life is already planned out he's good you know what's interesting to me is that so this dude who is in the our conversation for greatest heavyweight of all time but yet your casual fan like myself doesn't know that much about him because his personality is more reserved. He's not like a Connor or you know some of these other loud guys. <clears throat> yeah, so like, are you? But think about Stipe. Stipe's a full-time firefighter, bro. The the greatest heavyweight of all time he is? is a firefighter. Doesn't doesn't take any time. He's a firefighter year round. He, he's a he's a part time working on full time, but he is still a firefighter all year round. So, but so it's these nuts. Mm -hmm. these guys, these it's almost like you are not rewarded. For what my dad would say doing it the right way but in order to get the big you payday you have to be connor you have to be floyd mayweather well no to get the big those, payday. those guys each well those guys well listen they didn't make there's only one connor mcgregor but i mean you have to but be there's a guy out there to, mm, no well the, the guy like khabib who's the highest paid fighter in the in the ufc now oh, is he and he's super I, respectful doesn't talk shit is he the highest paid yeah now he is yeah I mean, if Conor decided to come back, he would be the highest paid because right. he's retired right now. But as far as contractually, Khabib's the highest paid guy. And he is, by the book, you, USADA can test him every day of the week. Do you think talk his trash. fights are fun to watch? Yes. I do too. I really They're fun do. to watch because he does one thing. I love greatness. And he does one thing so great that nobody can figure out. Me too. I'm going to tune in every fucking Until somebody time. figures it out. Yeah. Same with Floyd Mayweather. People are like, his fights are boring. I'm like, hit him. Yeah, that, I love seeing... Fucking hit I him. like people trying to figure out the puzzle. Me, I... I my, like, do, was, do you, are, are you probably not... Are you into F1 racing? No. Like, uh, Hamilton is like... No, I mean, he's just so much better than everybody. And me and my brother watch it. And I said to my brother, I'm like... I mean, we know Hamilton's going to win. What, who gives a fuck? He's like, because it's fun to see, like, you're watching the Michael Jordan of race car driving. Like, Tiger. He's so much better than everybody. I used to like to watch Tiger. His story's nuts. You want to talk about, I don't mean to interrupt you, but you want to talk about, you know how you're talking about dads and stuff like that? Yeah. So, Formula One racing, just to get started how in How many it, black guys in Formula One? Uh, he's probably the only one. And he gets a lot of hate because, because it's international, right? And they're not up to date wait he's the only one and he's the best by far not even close interesting uh so the sham daniel ricardo shout out to daniel ricardo the honey badger but anyways so he, it's it's the most expensive sport in the world so just to get on a team like the car you're looking at 12 million dollars a year just just to be on the team have the you, car like you mean to maintain the car it, and the it's, team it's, it's it's the richest of all rich sports so as a young kid to get involved in there like so much money go like I forget how much money, but it's a ton of fucking money just at the start at the little level. And everyone who's on the national circuit or the international circuit all start when they're when they're four. Mm -hmm. They start in those uh, box cars and stuff like that. It, but it's so expensive, the traveling, all that stuff. Lewis Hamilton's dad took three job, did three jobs. They didn't have money. I get chills. Three fucking jobs, dude, to make sure his kid had the right car, the right gear, and told him goes. I'm willing to do all this work, but you got to win. He won every race, bro. That's He's amazing. He's the best of all time. Amazing. The best of all time. 
And his and dad was his like, dad. hey, I don't mind doing all this, but if I'm going to do it, you better be fuck Like, I'm going to do it, but you better do it right. He won every time, dude. It's so it's and dealt with racism, yeah. everything. It's not that is super cool, man. I had no idea. That's I'm gonna dig into that story a little more. Oh, you gotta watch it, dude. It will blow you away. I love you know, I love also his hair. The words, his hair's <laughs> awful. And then his dude, hair, his hair. Oh, he, he his, it went back to here. And then all of a sudden, he, he has the best hair in the world. Yeah, winning a it's couple that, times. Another winning story. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> go go to the hair thing, Chin. What? When everyone when anybody talks yeah. about hair, I'm like, dude, look at Lewis. How dare you? How dare you? Like LeBron and Trump, whatever he did, do, do that. that. Look at that. Oh, he nailed it. Look at that. <laughs> <laughs> Left, right. He really nailed. That's like two different people. Isn't it amazing? The, dude on the right is getting it all non uh, all, oh dude he da dated the you know kendall jenner i mean you're talking the who's who papa i'm gonna tell he's you also, i think he's top five richest athletes in the world have you ever googled um derek jeter's starting nine oh they put it, they they put the, the the what they considered the nine best looking women nine. and they put them on a baseball field and it, in a batting order really it's hilarious but there it is the it, Wait, it what? might be in the field. Not Women the starting field. nine. We'll have names here. What? Oh my God! Look, Jessica Biel. Look at that. Adriana Lima. Jesus. Christ. Mariah. Hannah his Davis. outfield is Jessica DH, Alba. D H. Tyra Banks. I'm telling you, dude. <laughs> Look, his outfield is Mariah Carey, Jessica Alba, Jessica Biel. Kelly. Look at what's happening. Dude, did you hear what he used to do? Is that is that the best starting line? Uh, go to Brad Pitt's because oh, oh you Leonardo, they have Leonardo DiCaprio's top nine. Oh. Go over to Leonardo's. He had some hitters. Look at. <laughs> okay. Uh, I still think your boy Jeter beat uh, yeah. Go to Brad Pitt. Greatest looking man in the world. He, man, I still I think still uh, go, your boy I go Jeter. DJ beats her. I go Jeter. By the way, Brad Pitt, to me, like, you know, we were talking about lady shades, yeah. and I only wear lady shades. And, yeah. But, and some people are like, yeah, you, pe people comment all the time. You, you don't, you can't get away with that. Guys, there are like four or five people in the world that no matter what they put on, no matter they can. It looks dope. This dude, trendsetters. Brad Pitt can wear absolutely anything, and you'd be like, "Yeah, that works." This dude could. It doesn't matter. That's how cool. But his starting nine, not as good as Jeter. Dude, he was the Vita Guerrera. Who did? Jeter. Oh, that's Jeter. Yeah, man, that might put him over the top. Jesus Christ! Look at what are we talking? Do you hear about? what Jeter used to do? Yeah, the gift bags. Yeah. The sign baseball in the limo? I mean, how am I, how, with the kind of balls. Think about that. If you're like... Think about the ego. Think about... Not, for two things. One, to think, you know, we should, we should give them some gifts. That is ego enough. But to be like, they're going to want an autograph. Baseball? <laughs> and the girls are like, what? I don't give a yeah. fuck. It's so bananas. Gives, no, hold up. He doesn't give just a baseball. He gives a gift basket. A gift basket, dude. <laughs> on the way out the door. Thanks for the titties. Yeah. Here's your gift basket. Listen, that's like a goodie bag when you go to a kid's like, party. I, I'm a Paul, dude. Yeah. <laughs> you have to get into a limo. And with does that a mean you're not going to see him again? <laughs> like, is that like the sign off? Like, how do you know you get the gift basket? Did you get basket? the gift basket? Yeah. Fuck. Yeah, you're, you're not going to see, see him again. again. If you were going to, I can't even imagine, though. A gift basket? Like, so, if, say I'm single and I have the balls to go gift basket. I, I, maybe I'm doing something with electrolytes, like a, <laughs> like, like a, a coconut water. Like a, yeah, <laughs> I, this I would give a coconut water okay, electrolytes. Coconut, okay, a slim jim. They'd be like, is this a slim like a fucking you go a slim jim beef jerky thing? Okay, you go. just in case you got a long trip. I like that. And then I'd put a bunch of thick girl uh, merch in there. Oh, and they'd be like, that's offensive, dude. Okay, are you calling me fucking thick now? I go, I go some sort of electrolyte like a Gatorade or Powerade. Classy. Um, I'm gonna go like a dried fruit, like a dried mangoes or something like healthy. that. It's healthy and it's good for you. Well, I put an oatmeal pie in there. Oh, that's nice. <laughs> oh, like a like a. Oh, those are good. Oh, the jumbo ones. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna go and I'm gonna. This is how I say this candy bar because it's gonna make you feel good. I go with the hundred thousand dollar bar. Oh, I put one of those in there. Those so are nice. Classy. Yeah, those are nice. Yeah, and I might go with a little stuffed something. Like a like a little like a stuffed animal, like kind. a beanie baby. Yeah, something like that. <laughs> sure. Yeah, and then I'm gonna go gift card. Oh wow, with a m nice memento, or is it stamped? 
I'm going to go gift card, no note. I'm not going to say thanks or anything like that. That seems a little fucked up. Thanks for the like memory. A, like a gift card, but not like, um, you know, one of my favorite jokes, uh, like uh, Mitch Hedberg used to tell a joke. He'd be like, man, why do you want to give me a gift card? That means you're, you're taking money that's good everywhere. And it's on now it's only good one place. That's hilarious. Yeah, so that's true. Maybe I'd get them like one of those Visa signature debit cards. Just something. Maybe on the something. ride home they want to get a lunch or I, breakfast. I'd give them or, one of those cards where it shows the cat hanging on the, uh, the branch says hanging. Yeah. There. <laughs> Sign cool. it. Yeah. All the best. Or how about the one with the frog sh uh, strangling the bird and says never give up? It's like this. They're like, what the fuck? <laughs> what, what would be the most and insulting then a, the, the, thing? A Tony Robbins break? like life coach thing. Oh. Where they're like, <laughs> my life's fine. He gave me the seven step DVD to Dude. greatness. <laughs> Just a real fucked up gift. Uh, yeah. Dude, I, I once dated this girl who was a life coach. You and did? A year, I mean, dude, I, I must have been right fresh out of college. And she was a life coach. And I was like, I feel like you're a little young to be a life coach. And then I remember she was asking me for money because her power shut off. And she was giving me advice. And I was like, bitch, your Excel bill just, how are you going to give me advice? You don't even have lights on. Like, I just remember, like, how are you going to tell me? What the fuck? I'll never forget that. I remember a light bulb. I was like, oh, this bitch is crazy. I I think the most bananas, and she used to like to give me advice too. I dated a stripper in college. And do you know what she used to like me to do? She used to like me to go to her place where she stripped. And she would do these nasty lap dances for people. And then she would walk over and the guy would watch her give me his money and put it in my oh, pocket. Wow. She, power move she loved doing it she was like it turns me on let me i'd be like yeah i was like oh is that like her pimp or yeah, something she yeah. was like let me put it in your pocket i'm like okay she was like this is making me so what hot. a power move oh she would turns me on. oh dude it was so ballsy that's pretty gangster but i i kept picturing him like if i'm that guy and i'm like oh i got a shot and he just dropped 500 on this nasty lap dance and then he watches my his, his money go in my pocket. I'm like, that's fucked up. Oh. I'm, not, I'm not trying to see how the sausage is made. <laughs> yeah. like, all right, I figure I had a shot. Yeah, bitch. yeah, dude, it was as soon as she felt like she got all she could out of this dude, whether it was one move. dance or two dances, she would walk over and put the money in my pocket and never go back to that what dude again. What a gangster move, man! It was, but it turned her on. She was like, "Oh, it makes me want to fuck so bad." I'm like, "Yeah, that, weird, I'm a, dude. I'm on board for that one too." Like. <laughs> There's, there's, the, the, oh, I don't mean when you were in Cleveland, was it way more open than LA? I forgot to ask you this. No. It's about the same. Yeah. Cause Utah was pop. Open? Salt Lake city was open. Like we would get done, you know, the club was, was at a little more than half capacity, but when we would get out, we get on birds and we'd go by like, the bars and the clubs. Uh, dude, I'm talking a oh. line out there. I mean, just restaurants. Cleveland. Clubs. I went to Benny Hanna's. I went to a regular restaurant but everyone they were respectful and they had mask on like yeah. i went to uh park city to ride bikes with all the guys and they didn't even have to really shout up people to wear masks everyone had a mask on. i'm like oh this is probably why they're allowed to do this because these these mormons are following the fucking rules like they're not passing all along like they, to get on the the fucking lift to go up the mountain you would think because outside people really don't give a fuck they probably don't have their mask on no Everybody. Everyone, like, they didn't even go, hey, mask on. Everybody had mask on. You, but well, they were out living. My shows in, in Boise just got canceled the end of the month. Um, end of August or September? End of August. And so I think it really is. It's case by case, yeah, right? I think so, man. And and you know what? I'm, I, I think there has to be, like, right now, with every single one of our topics and, and and that are even the somewhat uh where you that makes it political like masks have somehow become political right so uh, the problem that holds america up right now is that we are a complete all or nothing country it's us versus them though but there's sides yes and yeah, it's, we're not but, together and what i mean by all or nothing is there's no compromise mm -mm. there's no middle ground there's anywhere. no so so you can't move forward and if you dare to dip your toe in the other person's pool because you go you know what i do kind of believe with them on this that one side that you're on the mob you're done get them you're not allowed on that side anymore and so what's stopping us as a country 
from moving forward because it's irrefutable that we are behind the rest of the world with this COVID shit. Even though we have the most testing, the most resources, we're it's behind everybody. Irrefutable. And the reason is, is because we are in a time in our country where we refuse to even listen to what somebody else who doesn't believe a hundred percent of what you think no one wants to give an itch not an and itch. i think people are waiting for the election november i'm like if you think that's gonna bring us together mm-hmm. you're so you're mm. dude here's the thing is that people feel empowered by the internet it's by, a problem yes by this stati- you and I could think of whatever we wanted to. Sugar, you could be like, sugar's good for you, and I could say sugar's bad for you. I can find that on the internet. 100%. You could, you could find an article that would back up. Me and my dad argue about this all the time. Right? So, so, so my thing is like, that's why when I hear people so emboldened, this is what this means. I'm like, hey, man, I read the same article. But that doesn't make me think I'm smart. No, there's a middle ground. And, 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 and your Google search can't make you think you're smarter than people who have gone to school, people mm-hmm. whose jobs... It is. There's certain things that aren't debatable by you because you work at Kinko's. Yep. You are. That doesn't mean what you do is bad, but you're not a doctor. You're not a lawyer. You're not a whatever specialized field. Everyone that thinks is. they're Doctor Fauci. Yes. Or when it, the same thing with like, dude. My thing is this. I'm not the smartest guy in the world. I've never claimed to be. But when it comes to things like climate or science, with the with this with the COVID. I listen to what the majority of the professionals say, mm-hmm. right? It's hard to, yeah, and it's hard to put all your eggs in one guy's basket. Yes. Like, so Fauci's going to make some mistakes. He's not perfect. Dude, the reason he makes mistakes is because he's human, but also because the society we live in, we live in a time where people want answers right fucking now. I know. Okay. And no one had answers back then. So, he, of course, he's giving wrong answers. And not only that, I would say stop forcing the, them for answers on a disease that's still so young we haven't we're putting out statistics about this is what how many people we haven't even gone through a cold and flu season with this yep so let's take a step back and not expect everybody to be but on both sides yes like you don't have to shut the world down no dude but that's what i'm saying yeah there's no middle ground there's no middle ground and that was my first initial reaction i was wrong i was like fuck mass what what's next because i know newsome it's yeah. what's next you're gonna take our work you're, yep. like, you're gonna shut us down it's become a fucking nazi society so it's what's next and then it's like well dude he's not gonna shut down everything and you're wearing masks so it doesn't spread and you're looking out for your, your yeah, neighbor and, and, and then the but thing they is, don't describe it like that no it's like you do this you do this and when you tell me this this and this and i don't trust you in the first place my initial reaction is fuck that i'm not right. doing that so here's the thing people are People are scared to be wrong now. Yeah. Because as soon as you're wrong, people will constantly reference it and go, yeah, but you were wrong, but you were wrong. You, I know. Yeah, motherfucker. You wanted an answer for something that I wasn't prepared to yep. give. So if, if at the beginning they had said, hey, everybody, a very young virus, what we know is that it's not going to kill everybody, but a virus will find the weak. Yep. Correct. So let's do this. Let's overcompensate. And I am acknowledging to you that this is an overcompensation. But until we know exactly what this is, let's figure it out. Let's figure it out together. Give us time. But can we overcompensate? But instead of coming out and saying these definite statements, because that's what they feel like they have to do. So now we're looking at these people who are supposed to be in control or in charge or know more than us. And now I'm looking at, well, he was wrong about this, wrong about this, wrong about this. And now you've let these other people who want you to be wrong constantly so seeds of doubt it's into crazy. everybody else i know and so we we as people aren't allowing our officials to grow and learn but, but it's also not on the people it's also you got to realize the the media to me is public enemy no doubt because no the doubt. media goes this is the world's yeah. on fire here the world's on fire here and this person's wrong and this side's wrong and then we can't it's like whatever side you you're going they're gonna tell you this person's the worst that's like saying this person's the worst so you're just like fuck so you don't trust anybody well because fear is way more of a motivator than anything else it, it also gets views and clicks. yes because fear gets you more if you love something that's cool but man you're scared you're gonna lose something it's gonna fire you 100 percent. it's gonna fire you i up. gotta pee so hard
the official electric trimmer of the UFC, son, Manscaped. Not only are they presenting sponsor for this podcast, but they also sponsor multiple UFC stars, including Max Holloway, The Blessed One, Francis Ngannou, Sugar Sean O'Malley, Sugar Sean. Manscaped is here to ensure your favorite fighter doesn't miss weight because of their hairy bushes, man. Manscaped is changing the grooming game with their Perfect Package 3.0. The Perfect Package 3.0 includes a premier Lawnmower 3.0 trimmer, this ceramic blade skin safe technology are designed to reduce nicks or tugs on your nuts. For all of my international listeners, they just launched their life changing products in the UK, Australia, and Canada. Time to hop on the Manscaped movement. Beep, beep. Inside the Perfect 3.0 package, you'll also find the Crop Preserver, Ball Deodorant, and Anti-Chafing Ball Deodorant Moisturizer. This will help you tame that summer swamp ass, fellas. The Thick Boys by Club also love the Crop Preservers, Ball Deodorant it for its anti-chafing moisturizing capabilities. Thick Boys get sweaty, too. you also find the Crop Reviver, Ball Toner. That's like having aloe vera infused cologne that is designed for your nuts. Game changer. For limited time, subscribers get not one. One, but two free gifts, the Shed Travel Bag and the Patent High Performance Anti-Chafing Manscaped Boxers. Get 20% off and free shipping with code FIGHTER20 at manscaped.com. Give your testies the absolute besties. Get 20% off and free shipping with the code FIGHTER20 at manscaped.com. That's 20% off with the free shipping at manscaped.com. Use the code FIGHTER20. Don't get bogged. Trim your hog with Manscaped. All right. Kids, and by kids, I mean adults. You need policies, man. Policy Genius saves their home and auto customers an average of $1,127 a year by shopping top rated insurers in one freaking place. If you're thinking, oh, that's it, $1,000 is weirdly specific amount, you're right. But they crunch the numbers, and that's just what it is, son. That's $1,127 you're saving. In fact, crunching the numbers is one of the things Policy Genius does best. Their insurance marketplace makes it easy to compare rates from the top home and auto insurance companies to find you the best price. Here's how it works. All you have to do is head to policygenius.com, answer a few quick questions about yourself and your property. After that, Policy Genius does all the work. They compare your existing policy against others in the market to make sure you're getting the right coverage at the best possible price, period. If Policy Genius finds a better rate than what you're currently paying, they'll get you switched over for free. The kind of service has earned Policy Genius a five-star rating across over 1,600 reviews on Trustpilot and Google. So if you're a homeowner, head to policygenius.com right now to get started. They've saved home and auto insurance customers an average of $1,127 a year. That's a fact, Jack. Who knows what weirdly specific amount they could save you? That's Policy Genius. Save money right now. Policy Genius. If you did, you see that snake? <laughs> I posted that today. Oh, really? Did you see that? Is it part of the current events? Catch a saw or so. We I posted oh, that I on my Instagram. It. I haven't seen it, dude. Dude, Let's go to current events, right, Chin? <laughs> sure, dude. Here we go. I guess it's the first one. You're looking at my biggest nightmare. <laughs> Was taking a shit and had a little visitor. That's insane, too. I'll be damned. What is that a python? How quickly? Was taking a shit and had a little visitor. That has to be Florida, yeah. Say you're on the toilet and you look down and you see that coming up. Oh my God. How quickly are you up and out of the room before you even I mean, know? I don't even know. I guess you close the and tape the lid down I, and then just keep flushing the toilet? Uh, Try to drown them out? I, I, I don't know what the game plan is. I don't know <laughs> that I would have a nine iron there. I, I, but that, that to me is, that's my biggest I feel like you fear. could, I mean. I Cover like it with grab, No, I feel like you could grab them. That's your move? I don't Stick know. Stick your hand in the toilet water? Nope. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the answer's no. That's not my move, man. That, uh, there's a lot in toilet hey, snakes. What, what, uh, they said it's very rare, but it's possible. And this you, is just uh, <laughs> other but, snakes. But but would you ever use that toilet again? I would I would be so freaked out. I could never use yeah, that no, toilet no, no, again. Do it. I would have to have someone I'm fix assuming, it. Look at that one. Why more people are finding toilets and snakes? And those are big boys. I'm, I'm burning the house. But why are... I, I don't get how the snake... is it. Was it a pet? Because the snake didn't come through all the piping like a fucking psycho. I think somehow it could. Yeah, there are yeah, super somehow snakes. somehow it could. There's but this snakes. one, this could be a plant too. You never know, but... Oh, there's a guy who goes, this must be in Florida. Yeah, that's my mm -hmm. initial... It must be Florida. I, well, I'm a, I am a little like... The only thing that makes me think it's a little fake, there's nothing in the toilet. 
So he said he was he was sitting down to poop. Yeah, and, I don't believe and, that. And so before I even look in the toilet, that, that's I'm, a I'm pyth- paying. That's a python. Yeah. I can't tell. That's like a ball python. That's what it looks like the one that my I'm son had. I'm a snake had. expert. Yeah. <laughs> I told that's you. That's a we, ball python, which mm, probably planted. Yeah, it doesn't look too... It doesn't look too massive, but still, it's my biggest fear. It's also not fear. my worst nightmare, you know? What's your... Not yeah, that. What? I just shut the lid. If I'm, like, taking a piss, A, I'm going to piss in his face and yep. shut the lid. But he was taking a shit. I don't believe that. Me neither. I actually yeah. don't. I actually don't. It looks like a plant because there's no pee in the toilet, and the toilet's and too clean. And also, like, a wild snake, if you move some, they're fucking like, what the fuck? This snake, uh, like, you touch him, he's like, that's cool. And I don't think a, a, a dude, I don't think, and that's not the cleanest toilet in the world, <laughs> but be- he he cleaned it before yeah, he shot a lot of, this. Yeah, a lot of it's super, oh, dude, I was watching last night. I think it's on National Geographic, or it might be Discovery. I don't know if Discovery's still balls deep in sharks, but uh, it's the... It's a Joe like Joe Exotic's cat. You remember Joe Exotic from yep. Tiger King? Yep. Dude, it's this new show on there. It's something about Joe Exotic. I think it's National Geographic. And they show how fuck you don't realize how bad of a person he was, man. Like that documentary does it, you know, it's kind of his fight with that other lady, right? Yeah. Dude, but they show like he was just overbreeding these poor tigers. And the tigers, I think they said it's something like I think eight, eight to or it might be eight weeks or eight months. So that they have that tiger for eight months to make money off it. After that, that tiger you can't use them anymore. Wait, wait, wait. Eight from, months from zero to eight months. Is zero to eight months, it, you make your money, and then that tiger's done because nobody can pet them or do anything. Nothing. About it. So then that tiger has to move on. Well, he would make so much money off the pups, so he'd overbreed the tigers. So you know he'd have like four hundred tigers. And people are like, dude, why the fuck you have all these tigers? Well, because he was just it was like a, a pu- puppy mill with tigers. And so, he, and then he would like, you know, mate like sisters with brothers and moms. With, so it was like this overbreeding and incest. So a lot of the tigers, like, there's one like liger there because he, you know, he was so stupid. He thought that like, only these hybrids, like a tiger and a lion or a leopard and a tiger, he thought once the world got so hot because of the, you know, the the ecosystem, yeah. and global warming, the only cats that could survive were these hybrids. He's a moron. But he th- so he that was the excuse for doing it. So nope. these tigers are like they have one tiger. It was like he had this huge head and then little stumpy legs and like had breathing issues. So they went into his. Uh, oh my god! Yeah, they went into it and saw like these tigers. Like one tiger was bred so many times that the the puppies or the the litter these cats had, like their eyelids were inside out. So and he didn't he don't want to put and they go he wouldn't pay money for it because. You know, he was so frugal with money, such an asshole with money, he wouldn't pay to have their eyes fixed. So it shows these two grown tigers, and it, dude, since their eyelids were so fucked up, the hair would grow into uh, their eyes. So he's like, they were like, people wonder why these tigers are so mean. They have fucking hair in their eyes, and he never paid to get it fixed. So then these people, once he went to prison, went in, rescued all these tigers, all these uh, wolves, and just, you know, gave them the surgeries that they needed. But they're showing how, like, they show like every. Uh, big cat sanctuary all of them all these cats came from his overbreeding every single sanctuary has some of his cats i gotta tell you such a prick i gotta tell you in all honesty i didn't watch that documentary leaving thinking this is a good dude you know what I mean? Like I figured he seemed a bit see but i like i watch him like there's a narrative here there's something going on and then people like he shouldn't be in prison for 14 years for doing that and but then when you look at it, you're like, oh, this guy was a complete asshole, man. I got to tell you though, man, uh, some sort of wizard. I mean, how does he convince two eighteen-year-old straight, fairly good-looking dudes to fuck him? You could do all the cocaine and play with his tiger. <laughs> That's one I mean, of my jokes. Like, don't. Like, I that's mean, my takeaway from Tiger King, man. I can't be around meth and tiger. My the biggest thing, honestly. The biggest what the fuck for the entire series that took away that was, handsome kid from is Oklahoma. Both those guys afterwards being like, "Yeah, we're, they weren't gay." I'm like, "What? Mm-hmm. What the fuck?" They just love tigers, dude. Yeah, I, yeah. yeah I, I was like, "What do you mean?" Oh, but you know the one guy who they like commit suicide. Yeah, came out. He didn't commit suicide. He was he was drunk, fucking around with a gun, and the one the the Joe's like assistant was there. He didn't blow his head off. He was fucking around. I was like, oh, I'll do it. And didn't think there was one in the chamber. No, and then boom. Oh, my God, yeah. dude. And he said he could see the look on the guy's face like, oh, fuck. He said when he pulled the trigger, like, fucking around, he's all drunk. He didn't uh, commit suicide. Uh, 
the I, I'm not like I don't understand the obsession with people wanting wild animals as pets. I I don't understand either. Even people, dude. I saw a woman in Trader Joe's. Ready for this? Had a had a baby ferret in a baby Bjorn on her chest. She's so single. So just looking, there was this little <laughs> ferret, right? And I walk up to her, and it was in the in the produce section. And I go, hey, is that a ferret? She goes, yeah, cute, right? I go, no, no, no I'm sorry, not ferret, possum, baby possum. Oh. oh. I go, is that a possum? <laughs> and she goes, Dude. she goes, yeah. And I go, do you have a possum in Trader Joe's? She goes, yeah, but it's cleaner than everybody in here. I go, no, no, no. It's not. Oh, is it? Yeah. And she goes, she goes, no, 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 no. It is. I clean it every day. And she goes, plus, I go, you can't have a possum in Trader Joe's. And she goes, well, nobody's told me to leave. I go, wait right here. <laughs> yeah. And I walk <laughs> you over. snitch on her? Oh, yo. I walk, I walk over to the manager. I go, hey, are you, I just out of curiosity, is, is, can, are you allowed to bring a possum in here? And he goes, what? I go, like, a possum. Wait, how the fuck can you bring a possum in here? I go, a possum. He goes, no, there's no possums allowed. I go, there is, there's one in that your bitch produce has a possum. Yeah, yeah. Dude, I, I mean, listen, I'm not a snitch, but I would like to buy produce here. Dude, that thing, those things look vicious. They're <laughs> ugly. Dude, dude, dude I remember in college, we would go tubing down the Colorado River. Like, that was our thing. The college football players would do it. And there's this big girl, big woman, had a, that thing's cute, the, the bottom of the big ears. With the big ears? She, she had a, a, I swear to God, had a straight up wolf as a pet. And it was a timber wolf. And yeah. it's the biggest animal I've ever seen in person. And she would just have it on its leash. And we're all like, oh, I guess that's legal. No, it's not. Dude. It was so dangerous. You know that dog park up on Mulholland near Laurel Canyon? Yeah. The, so when I used to walk my dog up there, this dude used to bring this giant, I used to think it was a husky. But the, hu like that, it, dude. the husky, what I was calling it, used to just walk along the fence. And that was his whole walk. But he stayed by the perimeter on the fence. And I asked, I go, your dog, that husky. And he goes, yeah, he's at least half wolf. <laughs> and I was like, what? And he goes, yeah. And I guess the, what he was explaining to me, he goes, part of that of being the wolf is it walks its perimeter. So it used to just walk the fence. But, and other dogs, you know, dogs are curious. They didn't, they would run up to sniff and they'd yeah. get within like 10 They're feet. Like, oh, and they'd stop and be like, oh, not one of us. The thing God. smells yeah, exotic. God. Dude, look at. You should. I'm, I'm telling you, that's what that girl had in Boulder, Colorado, and we were all so stupid. Like, oh, that's cool. We'd no. like. She'd be like, yeah, he's not. He's not really friendly. Don't pet him. <laughs> I, you know what? Th there is. So yeah, like, no oh. shit. It, because oh. it'll eat your arm. Yeah, and we're all like the same thing, dude. That's the biggest husky we've ever seen. Th that looks like something from Harry Potter. Why the it fuck? It does. Doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Some from Twilight. It looks I like Twilight. 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 Yeah, that's what, what it is. What the fuck? You know, we had these possum, dude. At Beth and I at this house we lived at in studio city right so beth and i were sleeping one night and outside of our window we heard Aah! and we could hear something mm, up against the wall Aah! up against the wall i go what the fuck is that i look and there was this there was two, two possums having sex and this possum was jamming this other oh, possum's wow. head into our aggressive and so beth, i was like the, i thought it was funny i go these two possums fucking and she goes it is so gross get him out of here so i start going hey hey let me tell you something about this male possum he just looked up Gave me a and just kept fucking looking at, looking at me. Possums like, don't give up. I turned huh? to Beth. I go, well, he's now he's eye contact. Yeah, like he's fucking her and he's got eye we contact. We gotta leave him. Yeah, yeah we gotta leave him. <laughs> but she said, spray water on. Did they give a fuck with the water? No. It's a possum, dude. <laughs> They're so gangster. <laughs> this possum was like, I'm getting it. Yeah, whatever. Like, hey, you what get, water? Keep doing it. We're man. hot anyway. I Bubba. did need a little spritz. Yeah. Thanks. I appreciate no, possum it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> what else you got? Here. Okay, so um, a rookie on the Seahawks tried to sneak a woman into his hotel room by saying that she was the DB for their team. <laughs> and he got cut. Didn't, he, but didn't he have her dress up in the game yeah, too? Yeah, they tried to dress her up to make her pass. <laughs> I know. Uh, but clearly, it didn't dress work. how? Like a player. I, like they put like a jersey on her or something. How big to make is she? Her. We don't know. We don't know. Because... Most professional football players are going at least buck ninety, isn't that? Yeah, safe? that's fair. As a cornerback, buck ninety, like you're not getting a lot smaller than buck ninety, right? Did no, God, they and they cut him. Yeah, they cut him. Fuck, was he a draft pick? Uh, I you know how stupid he was he might, oh, among the like seventeen on draft free agents. That's why they cut. Him. Yes, I mean, God, God, you know how stupid he so must stupid. feel. Why aren't you in the NFL? Just trying to sneak my side piece in or some chick I just met. It and you have to know if you're the first round pick, you might get a slap on the wrist. 
You'll be fine. If you are an undrafted out of Oklahoma State and they only spent two thousand dollars on you, see you see later. You. See you later. Like they gotta treat- hope she was worth it, Bubba. Hopefully she was just as bad as can be. <sighs> you know she. But now you're not in the NFL, she's so like, she's like, see yeah. <laughs> That's exactly yeah. what happened. <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna see if Odell yeah. Beckham must sneak me in. Oh my lord! I, I, I think you heard about the in the two Indians players who went out, uh, Cleveland Indians players, and they went out for dinner. Or I think that's what it was. And basically, what their thing with the rest of the team was like was like uh, pissed. They were pissed because one, they have one guy who's recovering, who's who's a cancer survivor. Yeah, and their manager Terry Francona has had a ton of health issues. Yep. So for them, for the Did rest, they of, get COVID. No, they found out, and both those guys got sent home. Cut off the team or just quarantined? I think they got sent home. Because you, know, you know what happened with the Marlins, right? Derek Jeter was like, oh, it's weird. You know, These guys went out to get a cup of coffee, and everyone got corona. Yeah. And people were like, nah, man, they're out at clubs and bars. Yeah. And it almost the, the shitty thing is almost shut down the season. Well, but, but that's the thing is that like, I'm wondering if I'm in the Indians dugout, and especially if I'm that dude who's recovering from cancer. You're going to be pissed off. And I know two of my teammates. I'm like, look, man, I know you want to go out and have dinner with your friends, but this is my fucking life. But here's, here's, how do you how do you regain that locker room? Uh, here's the bigger picture is, you know, with that when that happened with the Marlins, the reason it was such a big deal is because in pro sports right now, especially the ones not in a bubble, like the NBA is fine. The NBA is doing it right. They've had no cases. By the way, they're crushing they're it. They're like fucking yeah. crushing it. But the NFL is not going to have a bubble. So everyone's basing, and college football is basing everything off the, the Major League Baseball. So by Florida doing that and getting all those COVID fucking positive tests, you had the risk of shutting down the entire fucking season because you dumbasses wanted to go get you know a few drinks and be normal. Which I get because remember, these, all these are young kids with, with money. a lot of money yeah. and bored. And if they get corona, they're all going to be fine. The, the odds are they're all going to be fine. But it's the it's the way it looks to the rest of the world. They're going to shut down the league, and thank God that MLB commissioner is such a badass. He went, they have it. They test positive. They're in quarantine. They re-signed more players. They've won a, went on a big I win know. streak. I know that was amazing. Yeah. So thank God because I'm sure they got so much pressure to shut down. He's like, no, no, no. This is one team. We're going to carry on, which they did. And they're fine now. Marlins are winning. It goes back to the what we were talking about, the all or nothing, which is listen. We know you're young men with a lot of money. But we don't you want to play? Don't you want to make that money? Yeah. So instead of going balls out this year, we're not saying... I wish people were responsible enough to do this. We're not saying you can't leave the house. We're not saying you can't get a haircut. But hey, for these six months, we're going to ask you to stay out of the bars and clubs. Yeah. It's, it's like when I see a professional athlete get busted for weed. You know, these guys know when the tests happen. So to get busted... It's an intelligence test now. Yeah, to get busted, you have to be so fucking ridiculously dumb. Do, do, do you, you know what I'm, I'm saying? I'm with you. But now they're not testing for weed, really. They're like That's NFL's good. backed off. NBA's definitely backed off. There's no, there's no way... There's no way I, I think it won't be a an acceptable acceptable form of pain medication. It's getting it's it's basically there. I, Even with the UFC, so you're not high. Right? The, as long as you're not like high the day of the fight, they're they're starting to give it a kind of a pass. It it seems not because I would rather have my son. My, even if I, I'm an owner, and I'm going okay, do I want my players knee deep in these bennies? Do I want my players taking Vicodin? Or do I want them smoking a little weed at night? Oh, I know. Or CBD. Or, or CBD whatever. or yeah, whatever it happens to be. Because even if you're just looking from a business point of view. I know. It's better to have. And I think most are headed that way. Yeah. All right. What else you got? So there's a video of Alex Smith going viral. This is where nuts. Because he- mm-hmm. you guys, we talked about this. You saw his leg. We talked mm-hmm, about it with your mm-hmm. boy. He got cleared to play football, and this is his family celebrating. His wife is Smoke Show 2000. I <laughs> <laughs> oh, love it. Dude, the shit he went through. Come on, man. But he still moves that leg like a baby calf. Look yeah, at him. Yeah, the leg's still a little <laughs> suspect. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he still lifts it like he's shaggy. He wasn't moving the best, yeah. I, I am... So happy for this Me guy. Me too. How can you not root for him? And they say, yeah, he's going to compete for the starting job this year. I'm so happy. For, I, and I'm not, 
I was never an Alex Smith fan. I was never a fan of his game. It was just a little safe for me. But I, I and I've never rooted for the Redskins, but I'm rooting for this I'm rooting guy. for him, me too. I'm yeah, I've for always been guy. like lukewarm. There's nothing. He's such a, just a. But he's a winner, though. Like, he was a, such a winner for the Chiefs. And yep. they're like, yeah, we're in draft pack Mahomes. Well, let me ask you something. Is there a difference if you're a, a team, he's a winner, but is he going to win you games? He's not going to lose you games, which is big. But he's but 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 like Patrick no, Mahomes is Patrick going Mahomes to gonna, win oh yeah. some games. But he's the best player in the league. But you know what I mean? I like, know. That Super Bowl, he won. I know. He but won. Then that think Super of like a Trent Dilfer, a Joe Flacco. Like they just didn't lose. They it. didn't lose it. Yeah. They didn't fuck it up, and they were smart enough to get do. You know, they stayed within their boundaries, but they're not going to lose you a game. But I'll, I'll tell you, to me, Flacco just had the year of his life oh, because sure. he does lose. He oh now he does. Loves, but at the time, games. that defense, it, like just don't. Just don't give the ball up. Where just, are you at with um? Look at his wife. I know. Takes, where are you at with? <laughs> he was with, the first pick in the draft. Where are you at with Brady? You think Brady? You think Brady has enough on offense? You know, I'm a Brady fan because I'm a, a Patriots guy. Are you guys butthurt about it? Like, are you going to root for Tampa? No, no, I'm still a Patriots fan. I know, but we kind of root for Tampa. One hundred percent. Yeah, I am. Because what he did for you guys. I, I am also because I want him to. I was hoping, honestly, Win without Belichick, I want him to prove to people. I hate when people go, "He's a system quarterback." Well, that makes sense. He was in the same system his whole career, which undoubtedly helps for sure. But like, dude, the the, pl- the fourth quarter comebacks and shit. Get the fuck it. Also, he didn't have that great of talent around him. And you talk about confidence, right? The one thing that I, I'm always curious to hear about, like offensive linemen and other people say when he walks in the huddle we knew we had a chance at yeah. even if we're down 17 but when you can get 10 other people Nuts. to believe i think that's almost like something you can't put a, when mahomes when they're 21 down those guys still know they can they win know what he's capable of and and it also gives confidence to your defense to know all we gotta do is one stop and we're gonna be within seven well you're gonna find out if it's belichick or brady because belichick has cam newton who's not you know, right. he's, a, he's a baller for a long time. So that system's going to be there, and they don't have great players. They have Julian Edelman. Yep. And then now, you know, Tom Brady has all the talent in the world. Let's find out. I th- I'm I- rooting for Tom Brady, I'm, and I hope Patriots suck cock. <laughs> 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 uh, Belichick just seems like a complete... <laughs> have have no you doubt. ever seen the H3O show where it's Belichick and Nick Saban yep. sucking each other off? Have you seen the one like, with Belichick oh, and Bill Parcells? Yes. Like, you're the greatest all time. No, you're yeah. the greatest. <laughs> I was like, how long is yeah. this? <laughs> 60 minutes of this shit of them being like you know like they take all the credit too yeah They're like there's a real shit show and then i came in here oh or did tom brady walk in it's the worst series you've ever seen it's That's like hilarious. x those with saban and yeah. bilicek and they're both like to me the boring oh they're so bo- and and you can just tell they're the biggest assholes I do. in the world when and the funny thing to me is to see both of them smiling i'm like it's like two aliens learning how to smile for the first time it's not natural no you're like well that looks like it no, when they're talking face. about football and it just looks like two great white sharks having a conversation yeah they both they're both dead behind the eyes just black guys and jerking each other off who for four hours who would be more whose wife do you feel more sorry for oh uh belichick well, you know what? Probably saving because yeah. he's coming home. You better fucking have dinner, bitch. Yeah. It better be ready. The house better be clean. Otherwise, he's going to belittle I fe- you. I feel like... Belichick's going to come in. He has that shitty hoodie on with that cuff sleeves. <laughs> he's probably going to the basement studying film. Now after being sent home from Chicago for violating protocol, I... It just jumped on. Oh. Mm. Yeah, I, I, yeah, Belichick, yeah, he's going to do it. He's probably comes in the back door. Yeah. She probably already... He's got to play himself back dude. that he, he watches care. film in for Yeah, he doesn't yeah. care. Yeah. I think so. I, I, I mean, look, man, I'm sure Miss Saban is a saint. And I'm sure he was a great father. But boy... Oh, my... Was he? I, I bet he I, was I know, he, such <laughs> a pig. Did you ever hear when he came to the NFL and made that, play, that Jonathan Martin, I think his name, cry? What? He was so mean to guys... And the NFL doesn't work, dude. No. They're like, excuse me? He would belittle everybody and yell at them, and they sucked. Usually it just doesn't work in the NFL. If you're a professional football player and the coach yells at you and you cry, you pretty much have to quit, right? Like, there's no he, coming he back. Got, he got bullied and got traded. Oh, that's the one he with got, the He got guy. traded to the Niners. Yeah. Jonathan Martin. And he came from Stanford. Yes. And, like, they drafted him pretty high, and I guess Nick Saban just that's shit on him all right. the time. So he'd start crying. That, I, I, have, I have to say, I never had a coach... 
I never had one of those coaches. I never did. My my college baseball coach, we call we called him Slim. That's what he liked to go by, Slim. And he was just just tall, thin, really like slow draw. And um, he was just like the easiest. I had real long hair. Well, you saw it. We saw it. it was sick. And traveling in Texas at the time, the, when I used to, I loved getting heckled from the other fans. So one with Sol Ross. We went to this place called Sol Ross once. And their nickname for me when I used to show up was Cher. Oh, wow. It, I, may, 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 by the way, one of the best heckles I ever heard Cher. coming from a baseball game. My junior year, I think, my baseball coach was a guy named Jeff Brown. Jeff Brown played uh, linebacker with Jack Del Rio at USC, but oh, wow. he was also in the Dodgers. Baller. He was also played for the Dodgers when Piazza was there. Oh, was wow. ahead of Piazza as a catcher, but I think crushed both of his feet in a car accident and could never play again, and Piazza went above him. But he ended up being a bigger dude because... We'll say he, Piazza would go behind him. But he went at... Yeah, and no, but he ended up... J catapulting no, i'm saying piazza likes the way the dick tastes what that's what they say is that right that's what they say carrie i didn't mean to derail your story <sighs> no that's a that's a heavy accusation that is pretty sure he might be i, I don't know maybe he might be buried though look that up Jen. i think he I is thought he i don't liked think dudes. marriage really matters you're right John. <laughs> yeah <laughs> How do you spell i mean elton john was piazza p-i-a-z-z-a how dare you both of you have been in LA <laughs> way too long not to know how to spell Mike Piazza. Yeah, he's such a big deal here. V. Yeah, you know what? we're a lot of married. Oh, okay. She's a Alicia show. Yeah. He said, "Hold my dime piece wife shop and he, shut your fucking mouth." Yeah, I don't know, man. I don't. But again, know. Elton John was married at one point. Yeah, and so was. <laughs> so isn't together. well. There you isn't. go. It was kind of a. It was kind of uh, still isn't <laughs> hilarious. It was, a, it was a rumor around yeah. the around the water cooler. <laughs> <laughs> that little sugar in his tank. Not that I give a flying fuck, because he was my favorite player. Dude, I had a Mike Piazza jersey. You know what I love the most about him? So he used to swing one of the, I think, can you find out the size of the bat he used to swing? I think it was incredibly big. But what I used to love about him is he used to drag it up to the plate behind him. Oh, he was so Because good. it was like, I, this is a club, and I am going to fucking club you with it. Was more... The, but his the size of the bat he used he was not a good catcher people should stop with that good hitter though great uh, arguably outside of maybe johnny bench the best offensive catcher Dude, he was ever great i mean because I, I remember i was collecting baseball better than cards johnny bench, actually, his, better. i was collecting baseball cards and his was so hard to get and yeah. if you got it, it was so good it was him and hideo nomo married hideo nomo come on man pitch no on, hitter bro. but pitch mike no piazza no? used to hit the opposite field home runs with that you're like is he hitting it to the opposite field why did the far? gay rumors come out i can't get over that because he even got to me come on man i, I mean like, do you know do you know i mean listen between the two of us i'm sure you've heard a couple of rumors about yourself that aren't true that's fair okay yeah you know, <laughs> you know what i mean that's like and I, i've heard a couple about me that for sure are unfair and and real so but that was like that was like that made like rumblings like with but, the, listen dude if you're if you are, if Chin, you type in why do people think Mike Piazza is gay? It probably came from one troll in the nineties. Exactly. Like Badon was like, he's gay, and then it showed like, something on the New York Post. I'll look it up real quick, but it, it was something. It's dude, some dude right who used to date his. There we go. It's so dumb. The little press that happened in two thousand two. This was a wake of post gossip. Co oh, gossip comments making it very thinly suggest that the Mets roster include a homosexual superstar, probably Piazza. For some reason, Piazza the Mets felt compelled to defend his reputation. Oh, wow. So this guy just randomly made it up. Mm -hmm. Yeah. By the way, like, it. I, who cares? Who, I mean. But he's also like, that's what he said. He goes, who gives a fuck? He yeah. goes, I'm straight, but it, what if I would? Who gives a fuck? Who, who, who cares? Like, my job isn't. How, I'm surprised he didn't sue that person. Yeah, but but like, that would be defamation of character. Or is I, that is that anti-gay if you sue someone? Let me ask you. Let me, <laughs> let me ask like, you. A I'm question. not gay. Oh, you hate gays? Like no. That's an interesting point, right? You're suing him for what? Defamation of character. You're saying there's a problem with being <laughs> gay? No, but I'm not gay. It's weird, huh? Yeah, but it's also interesting that that he feels like he needs to defend himself. You know what? I agree. You know what's weird to me though is, and I guarantee you, in the UFC, NFL, NBA, MLB, 
there's someone who's just like taking pipe on a na- nightly basis and probably one of our favorite players. It's crazy to me in the in 2020 that that person still hasn't come out. Like I, it's still not a safe space. Like remember that Sa- Sam's? I forget his name was a uh, he was the SEC, from Missouri SEC yeah Missouri defensive and play, player of the year defense player yeah. of the year got drafted late like third or fourth round then really didn't stick around the team yeah but yeah Michael Sam but then when you talk to scouts they're like he really wasn't that good no he was a good college player. Yeah, it was, did you see his draft when he got drafted? He yeah. just grabs that little twink. Oh, like, uh, uh. you know Even what? I was like, damn, it, dog. It, you know, it reminds me. I saw you. I showed you that video of the 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 car. That video. Oh yeah, I, yeah. That's what it reminded me of. Just, well, that's what they did that yeah. night. Yeah. <laughs> Fucking third round, bitch. <laughs> yeah, I I don't know, I, because I've never been in the locker room. <laughs> twink. Oh yeah, he got in there. <laughs> yeah, that twink gun got pounded yeah. oh. out that night. I don't know yeah, because I don't, I've never been in a locker room. I don't know if it's if they're more worried about the locker room or the attention that it brings. I think uh, I think both. I think both. I because think the locker room still have a ways to go as far as accepting it. But if you're playing, and honestly, if I'm a manager, or coach, or even a player on the team, I don't care if you're gay. As long as you're good. I don't want to talk about you being gay all year. That's that's a good point. Do you know what I mean? It's, like it's kind of the same thing with Tebow. Like he had the skills, but like, dude. You might you're good enough to be a backup anywhere in the team, but we don't want to deal with fielding questions because you're so time. much more famous than exactly. everybody in the league. We don't want to deal with it. So then, Colin Kaepernick could he play in the league? Probably. They don't want to deal with this Black Lives Movement every fucking does, game because it your, overshadows. Does with, your talent match up to the problems that we are going to have? That's a, that, and that's again, that's bottom line. It's not that they don't you know support Black Lives or they don't support Christians with Tim Tebow. They just don't want to deal Dude, with. Dude, look it. at Terrell Owens and Chad Johnson. Mm-hmm. Arguably, two top ten to for sure. For sure, top five receiver of all time. Hundred percent. But when his skills dipped just a little, see ya. Same in entertainment though. Think of all the nightmare guys you heard where they're killing it, they're killing it, they're killing it, and then I'm you know a they're a dick and they're late all the time and they're a complete nightmare. As soon as they have, you get two. As soon as you have two box office flops, nobody fucks with them. I'm going to see you. I'm going to tell you, but I won't mention names because that's not my thing. But I will tell you, I know two touring comics who I've heard from club owners. I can't wait for him to stop selling tickets so I don't have to book him anymore. Agree. I could give you names as well. Because you're a nightmare to work with. And it's kind of fun when, you, when I go, who have you had in here? And they go, oh, boy. Yeah. I'm like, who is it? Yeah. yeah. And then they tell yeah. you just these horrible road stories. I'm like, what? Yeah, it's crazy. But like, Or you hear how some uh, you know, main, main uh, feature comics, the way they treat their features and their MCs. And a staff. Like makes them carry their bags and shit everywhere. I'm like, why? I'm fascinated by how when someone will go, oh, I'm so glad you're here this week. Last week, so-and-so was here. Had I love it. I'm like, what they pe- do? All these people in. Can you believe some some of those people don't tip the green room? Nuts. Can you believe they have a server come in, bring them food, bring all their people food, bring the feature and the host food, take care of you all weekend, clean your fucking green room, set it up with your rider, and you don't tip, tip them at all. I I was like, or how, how about the the I'll hear stories of like. Yeah, the staff was just worn out after last week. This guy was doing four hours. Yeah, what he's like happened? he went to three in the morning, and the staff's like has kids. Yeah, they get home, they'll be back the next day, and then they don't tip. And then also they didn't sell tickets, so it's like nobody made money. If you're going to do something to the staff, uh, I might like sometimes I'll say to the staff, "Hey, second show, late show, Saturday, Saturday, I'm gonna be high. It's gonna run a little long. I'm gonna get everybody pizza, or I'm gonna do this and this and this." Or I'll tell the ask the manager what's the best thing for me to do, because I don't want. Look, we're working this together. The truth of the matter is, if the wait staff is upset, my show's not as good. A hundred percent. If they're, but I've never had. Have, I've never had an issue with the wait staff ever. No, because the you're waiters a good are dude. always super cool. And I and, and we take care of. Yeah, every time I do a I, I, man, not kidding. I spend five minutes every set talking about why they should tip the wait staff. Mm-hmm. A lot of people don't know, like, first of all, I have people come up to me and meet and greet and go, I didn't know the wait staff had to tip out. I'm like, yeah, oh, if you've dude. never worked in a restaurant, yeah. if you tip ten oh. percent, they tip out six, they're you only You should look 4%. at comedy clubs. It's just a restaurant and there's yeah. entertainment on stage, but they're making tips and they need the money off alcohol sales and tips. Yeah. That's where they make the bank. Yes. 
And, and, and I'll tell you what, what's crazy too is I get close with some of the owners, like Keith from Wise Guys. Me and I him, him, me and him could start a sports podcast because his, bro- his brother was a, uh, a coach, college football coach, big time, Alabama, Oregon, I think Weber State, Louisville. He was offense coordinator. So me and him can just talk football, college football for hours, dude. He's the He's best. A great guy. And his club is great. The best. And, and you can also tell a lot by anytime I've been around a staff that's miserable, the management it's never is good. miserable. Yeah. There's the one place that we all, that you and I mention a lot, that is a shit show. And that staff is a shit show. And when you, that manager who works there, they're not nice though. Like the that's manager's not cool and the staff isn't cool. That's what I'm saying. And then even though you're friendly, you can just tell they want to get the fuck out of there. It's a trickle down. And even the audience can feel a little, you know, it's, just, it's weird. The, the reason I would say for now and forever, this guy, Greg Garcia, Greg created My Name is Earl, Raising Hope, Yes, Dear, Guest Book, The Millers. Um, this dude is, I think he's developing something with Tom and Christina right now. This dude is a genius. But I would tell you, and I've been on a bunch of sets, far and away the best set ever because he's such a good guy. Mm. It's trickle down. It's trickle down. He will not allow, he hires good people and he's not going to allow you to be an asshole. Don't you on think that, that's where it comes with Ellen's case? It's trickle down. Everything's trickle down. Every, so for her to say, it's hey, all something them. was happening. Uh-uh. So, mm-mm. Mm-mm. When you are that person, and then you hear another, I don't. Again, I don't think she should lose her job or be Me canceled. I think she should be reprimanded and then take accountability, and then come back and hopefully she changes ways because she's great at what she does. She's the best. Yeah, the daytime talk show. She's the best. She's funny. So she shouldn't be canceled. But for her to go, oh, I was just the staff. I didn't know that was going on. No, no, no. You know exactly. And then uh, uh, an employee came out. Yeah. And they didn't want to re- reveal their identity. And was like, oh no, dude, she was a fucking nightmare. It was like take responsibility. Yeah, she was like, we knew if Ellen came in, we had to leave the room. Her bodyguards would come first to let us know she was coming. We couldn't look her in the eye. They were like, it was a nightmare. And people used to have the joke: if you last a year. You know, she goes, it's like uh, Devil Wears Prada. Yeah. Like, everyone was so terrified of Ellen. It's like, that's that's the culture, man. But, 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 like, I'm with you. For sure, shouldn't be fired. No. It should Too be. Too talented. But f- forget that. Like, being an asshole doesn't mean you don't get to work. Leave it up to the people. So if she's an asshole and people are like, you know what, because of her work, I'm not going to watch her show anymore. Let the yeah. Ratings, then if the ratings drop, then get rid of let her. Let the ratings agree. dictate it. Let, let the, the people, people yeah, dictate agree. it. But 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 you she shouldn't just be out of pocket, out of hand, uh-uh. summarily dismissed because she's an asshole. But how, but I wonder if people could relate to it if she came out and said, "Listen, I, I've been famous for a long time. I was the first out person to kind of stand up for what I believe in. I have I had to grow up with this sh- this shell and you know I just became an asshole. Yeah, I apologize. We're changing the ways." You know, I'm still going to give back to the community. I'm still going to run the show. Hopefully, you guys dig it. I think they, if she did that, I feel like people are like, ah, I've made a mistakes. Thousand but the, the, it, percent. It, what doesn't work is go, oh, I'm going to fire the showrunner. It's like, no, 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 no. That ain't going to fix it. No. It, 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 the, she doesn't deserve to lose, not that she needs money, but it's like, not about money. The people who work for her, who have decided to stick through it, who need the money? Oh yeah, they don't the deserve staff. to lose their job because the internet thinks working for an asshole is not okay. But I, yeah, I think the whole when it comes to celebrities when they're dealing with stuff like this, it's like the Nick Cannon thing. I don't think he should have lost all his jobs. I just found out I used to listen to his radio show every morning. I, I didn't know they took him off that too. They took him off everything. So to me, it's like he made a huge mis- huge mistake. Yeah. And then didn't want to apologize, but I, I, I don't, I don't, I'm, I don't think he should lose all his livelihood, dude. Off. But I don't think people really like people issue statements or like Ellen issued that weird statement. You're like, all right, I guess we believe that. But I think it would go so much further if they did it themselves. With and they're just like, here, if Nick was like, this is what happened, man. This is why I said this. I fucked up. I apologize, dude. He as a Jew, I would be ups. I, I was upset watching him get canceled because. What cancel culture doesn't do is help solve the problem. So I'm all about it. So if, there, if there's a problem, are we going to just keep making more problems or are we going to try to solve it? Because what keeps making more problems and what pushes people further into their corner is to get attacked. 
right? By that group, by that, that he made a mistake. So right? you think he's be more pro Jew? No. So w- what you do is it's all about education and conversation. Mm-hmm. Okay, so you think this is the way it is. Let me introduce you to a couple of rabbis. Let me take you. How about you meet a Holocaust survivor? Let me tell you what the Jewish experience is, and then you can make up your mind. And if you're still that way, then yeah, maybe you shouldn't work. Right? Yeah, yeah. Because then but you're like, a dumbass. But 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 you're talking about instead of helping push conversation forward to the future what you're You're suppressing it worse man and when you put the lid on the boiling pot eventually what happens the lid blows off agree man so so this is the whole we go back to all of the thing we've been talking about we just keep putting lids on boiling pots which is what this entire country feels like right now everything instead of going is this how you feel man you know it's fascinating to me to hear i'm sure you've seen shows watched shows like me about the white supremacist who now isn't a white supremacist and all it came down to was education or being around black people or or something that just showed them oh i've been thinking wrong yep that's what it is man most of people who really hate gay people either have never been around gay people or are gay and just don't want to admit yeah something's gay, going on there right yeah. but it's not like you're gonna get it I mean, you can't tell me you're gonna go to. You've been to a gay pride parade? That's a good time, man. Yeah, they have so much fun. <laughs> yeah. yep. Carefree. The most fun. I get so many compliments on my scarf <laughs> <laughs> and my jeans. Like those jeans, big boy. Yeah, oh like, yeah. 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 <laughs> um, yeah it, it, again, it's just if more people are in, introduced to that, whatever conversation. Com- conversation. Yeah. Like one of my best friends is from the Middle East, Tarek Azim and his brother Yosef, two of the best people I know. And I'll hear people hate on people from the Middle East or something like, oh my God, dude. If you knew these people, yeah. they are some of the best people. Their culture is so fucking dope, man. Dude, I've the been f- to his wedding and the food. How good was the food? Oh my God. And the way they dance oh. and the loyalty. Oh my God, dude. But y- you know what's crazy? They're better than white people most of the like they're they're so ju- they're just like so like about family and friends fun. and the community and fun. And they're just, they hold each other accountable. Yep. They're great leaders. They're brilliant. And it's like Yosef's, uh, you know, he's a big time cop in San Francisco and the shit he deals with. So when I hear, some of my best friends are cops. My father in law is a cop. Yeah. My best, one of my best friends, Yosef, is a cop in uh, San Francisco in the Tenderloin district. So he's dealing with the worst of the worst. So I hear people shit on cops. I'm like, oh my God. If you could sit down with a cop and go through their daily or nightly schedule, you would be singing a different tune. My buddy. But all you're doing is turn on CNN yeah. and seeing that cops are the worst and these body cams. That's not real, dude. My it bu- don't, it's real, but that's not the that's not the majority. You're seeing yeah. these, the the minority incident. My buddy, which are terrible, who but works for the DOJ. I was talking to him and I was like, "What?" I was asking him, you know, what do you think would help? Because I'm with look, you can't classify an entire group of people by one or two ins- on any side. The Black Lives Matter, the police. You can't say this whole group is like this because of these people, right? That's so stupid. But my buddy was like, you know, more people should do ride-alongs. You agree? More people should do ride-alongs. And I said, have you done one? He said, man, it changed my entire... And I said, why? He said, well, because we went from zero to 100, like three times. Like, hey, what do we want for lunch? Oh my God, we could die right now. (laughs) Yeah, that's... Zero to 100. He said, we did it three times in a day. And at the end of the day, because all three of those times, both of those officers, if things had gone squirrely, something terrible could have happened. So he said at the end of the day, he asked them, does this, and he goes, yeah, they were like, it's, is this what it's like? And they said, yeah, this is, this is what it's like. And like calm, cool, and collected, and you have so much respect. It, it's anything with perspective. It's like, you know, the first time I was, I've done movies before. The first time I was on like a major movie set was that tax collector with David Ayers, terrible movie, but that David Ayers <laughs> and Shia LaBeouf. And people are like, dude, you can act. You can do this, you can do this. And then when you see like Shia LaBeouf act, you're like, oh, no, but you can't. Yeah, you, yeah. Dude, what the fuck is anybody talking about? Or you see David Ayers. I love this dude, by the way. He's the best. I I know people give him a hard time. I don't know why. Dude, Honey Boy? Did you see Honey Boy? Did anyone see Honey Boy? I didn't. It's so good. The fact that that was not... Honey Boy. Dude. Did you see Peanut Butter Falcon? I saw Peanut Butter Falcon. That one's good. As a father and a son. Honey Boy. When you watch Honey Boy, you will openly weep. Oh, no. And that's a true story about his dad. Dude. He played his dad, right? I was blown away by this movie. I... It... Because what I've said for a long time right now. about parents, 
is that I've I rejected I've I've started to reject the idea of saying someone's a bad parent when most of the time they're just doing the best they can. Does that make sense? Like but not they're, bad parent to me means you're intentionally being. Some people are just not great at it, but they're you. They they're love their, their kids. Best. That's all they know. This guy, there were moments, and you would watch. You're like, I can't believe he did this to his son. He raised his son like this. But there are points in the movie where you genuinely see how much he loves, and he's playing his dad. I know, and he. You, I, I'm pretty Dude. sure he wrote this too. Yes, he's Dude, in so, rehab. He's he wrote so it in brilliant. Rehab. Dude, I'm telling you, I was on set with, during this a dramatic movie. scene, and I. It's like. You know, you know, like when you're watching NBA on TV, yeah. and you're like, God, those guys are pretty good. Those are they're tall, right? And then you get to the game, like, oh my God, they're fucking huge, dude. And so they're, these are the best of the best. Oh my God, that's how it was for me being on set with David Ayers, who did Training Day, who did End of Watch, Bright, Suicide Squad. You're like, oh shit, and you see he's basically an offensive coordinator on a football team doing all this stuff and my mind was blown i'm like yeah. oh my god dude it, it's 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 it was you, so cool man when you get around people who are great i will so it's one of the reasons why whenever Ch i knew Chappelle was gonna be at the store he's gonna pop in i'm going oh yeah because you guys you you, you stop to, to, to see because you go well this this is the this Have is to. the bar, mm -hmm. and watch what what makes them yeah. arena acts or something like and that. To, and to see him, s so what I one of the reasons that I would always watch Chappelle is to see him be so still on stage sometimes, but his still watch his stillness and you know not raising his voice sometimes watch his stillness still suck you in. Yep was such a great lesson for me. I watch all the vets. Like, I'll watch, uh, you know, all the vets. Like, Mark Maron's one of my favorites, where me and him can be complete opposites. Yeah. But I watch him because he's so fucking, he's been doing it so long. Yeah. He's been doing it correctly. You watch him. Do you ever just, do the stool? Just on the stool. I don't. Uh, no. No, no, never. Do, do, do you know one of the biggest lessons for me? So, I used to pace a lot. A lot, a lot. And then I was like, okay. So, for this year, I did for two separate years. For one whole year, instead of pacing, I just stood behind the microphone. Mm -hmm. Never took it out. And so, the, and then I was like, okay. Force you to. And so for the next year, I only sat on the stool. Interesting. And now, what it did is it made me realize this part of this story works so much better mm -hmm. when I'm still, mm -hmm. that when I move now, it, it makes the more. movement yeah. mean more. And it, it, so it all has a meaning now yeah chris when i when i remember chris delia watched one of my first sets and he goes you're so big and you're animated and you like to use your body you move so much though mm -hmm. he goes where if if you just if it's more calculated it's gonna the jokes gonna hit hard it's gonna mean more if when you move he goes i'm the same way i like to move but you got to do it and make it count he's like because now you're moving too much joey diaz you know used to pace like a caged animal and i told Didn't him he used to wear a suit too? three piece suit but I Nuts, told him, huh? I said, hey, man, you're scaring people. He's so big. And his movement was because he was also fucking, probably Four did an eight ball. Half. Yeah. No, dude, 240. Oh, wow. When I met and him, he was 240, up. coked up. And, but he was, his movements were so fast and furious. And he was pacing the stage and he was doing this with his hand. I was like, hey, man, you're, you know what? He just posted, he and Rogan just posted a video, I mean, a picture of him. And that is even 10 pounds, maybe not 10, 50 pounds heavier than when I met him. He was a, man, Coco was a, there it is. My brother took that headshot. Look at this dude. So he's probably 280 there. So I met him probably 40 pounds lighter. I feel like I'm slowly morphing into Joe. <laughs> <laughs> Do you not look similar? <laughs> Yeah, man, put a bandana on that dude. You're yeah, not too far. A <laughs> a sexy motherfucker, man. One can only hope. I used to love it. I go, what are you doing tonight? He was like, I'm slinging dick and giving out bubble gum. <laughs> <laughs> that's a great picture. Yeah, man. We Rogan took that. like cleaning out the office. That's right. That's in back of El Compadre. There's something sad about everyone moving, right? Yeah. There's something sad about it. It's sad because of how it happened. Mm hmm you know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. and like I said, I'm, I'm going to miss the 
camarade and again i, I got to give rogan the credit for this he but posted a picture of his studio somewhere. i'm gonna i'm gonna miss the community Please. right the there's such a collaborative feel here amongst comics yeah i'm gonna miss that because like the team it really it, to me it helps the art the mm -hmm. collaboration and the more people are together fucking around i think it makes people funnier and that look at that that's like a spaceship crazy it's cool huh that is bananas. What there, there's something uh, I should, probably shouldn't say where that's at, but there's there's something uh, I think inspiring and something like uh, kind of like rebel like with everybody tr going el somewhere else and mm -hmm. starting fresh there. Because mm -hmm. comedy stores cement, it's always been cement. They didn't need you know other people, but I think there's something cool about that. But then there's something heartbreaking about when I drive down Laurel Canyon. I'm like, huh. Ain't doing this again, Bubba. It's a it it is a bummer that the I mean the, the depends how you look at it, you know. I I think it'll be interesting to see where the next comedy hotspot will pop up. I could tell you. You think it's gonna be in Austin? I know it is. Yeah. I, I mean, it is the one thing that Texas has going for it is obviously massive, massive. And it's got the biggest comedian in the world mm -hmm. coming there, mm -hmm. and he's bringing his people. Mm -hmm. So you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> and there's something like really cool about that. Y yeah, it's like the regulators saddled up. Mount up. Yeah, <laughs> I don't, there's something really cool yeah. about it, you know. Yeah, but man. then there's also something that keeps me up at night with horrible anxiety. Me too. I mean, I, I mean, I'm telling you, I got LA tattoos all over me, man. I've, I got Venice flowing through my veins, man. I got. You know, West Hollywood, you know, no sugar in my tank, but I got West Hollywood. Like, there's something to me that I just connect so much with, like, the history of Hollywood and the store. And, like, yeah. I think of the Laugh Factory and, like, I just have so many memories, man. I, but then there's, all, but then there's that where it's all about me. And then there's stuff like, you know, my, my son growing up here and I, I see the other kids and their parents I'm like that. That ain't good, man. No. That ain't real. I agree I'm telling with that. that ain't real. I agree with and all these nannies that come up and pick up these other kids. This, I, this ain't real, man. Because no. I didn't grow up like that. And there's somewhere if we go to Texas, I can be like that. They have no. a public school system. They're some of the best in the nation. If they are good at sports, they have the best football program in the nation. Drew Brees went to that school. Baker Mayfield went to that school. Then the academics are good. So if they are good at sports, dude, you're on the highest level yeah. possible. But then I don't know. There's pros and cons, man. But it's. When I say it's probably the scariest thing in my life, man, trying to figure it out. Me too, man. You know, because the unknown is scary. But I, but I, what what does give me comfort is if I know my my close friends are coming with. Me. I know my close friends are coming with me. Joe's gonna be fine if nobody goes. I think he's doing. Joe's right. Joe. Yeah. Joe's, you know. Yeah. Joe Rogan, dude. And I, I read an article about a, 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 a contract he just signed that I think he's gonna be all right. Yeah. So <laughs> he, he, yeah, he's, he could he could move to Mars, yeah, yeah, yeah. and we're like, oh, okay, yeah, let's yeah. go to Mars. But man. the funny thing is, like, are you taking the forty day trip to do Rogan's podcast? Yeah, yeah, I'll, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So there's that, but I, I like there's comfort in you know I think if more people go, you yeah. know, like me and Theo talk about it all the time. Man. We so Beth and I are also we're we got one foot out. It's for us. It's just where and um do you have a few picked out i have a few what when i, I don't mean i'm narrowed down to two. Oh, you went to two when i went to park city this weekend not that i could live in park city but when i was on that ski lift going to mountain bike i'm looking around I'm like this is living man my cousin it's, lived it's there. a little slow for it'd be slow for what i do and be tough my cousin was an actor scott scott has worked since party of five. Oh wow salt lake city he loves it park well he ju they just moved oh did they just move they just moved okay. chin have you been there Probably stopped in real quick. The fishing, really dude. The it looks fishing, amazing. The it looks like beautiful. I was like, holy fuck, when it's like, well, not every day. Yeah. Like, I, I dig it, but then the, I still have some of that fast lane in my blood that I need for stand up and just for stimulus to make the podcast good. Oh, like, the vibe of LA, because I don't know if that vibe's going to be out there in Texas. Dude. Then that worries me. That's what I keep telling Beth. Because I'm around these hustlers and shakers and. The vibe is like, zzz, and you feel you got to get up and you can feel it. Even though I'm a little distance from it now, where I'm at, you know, my house now. But I drive in the city and you can just feel this. Yes, it's like you know when all the bees vibrate and kill the big hornet. Like we're all a bunch of bees, dude. It's why we moved from Encino. When we sold the house when the 
kids moved out, I'm like, hey, it's sleepy out here. Let's get down where the energy is. So we're looking at two places, man. We're looking at Vegas. Love it. And we're looking at Nashville. Love it. Um, and it, it's, but they're both scary. They're both, bra- because we don't know where our business is going to be. Do you yeah. know what I mean? So I can think of all these places because I'd like to travel a little less. So I'm trying to think, what's where can I work in town Me too. with a little bit of hustle yep. and still drum up some business? Vegas, you'd get there. 100%. But when? But when? Yeah, I know. Right? The unknown is so scary. That's the thing. When? If you were saying, hey, everything's getting lifted tomorrow, would you go to Vegas? Yeah, because yeah. I know that with some hustle... You can make, you're make, but I, the, the people were mentioned, I think you're going to make it no matter what, but I think it's to just to make sure you're happy. The other thing I have to, that on top of my anxiety is I'm making a decision for my two young kids and my wife. My wife's all, I have no friends out there. Yeah. You'll find friends. That's what Beth's saying. We can find friends. Yeah. Well, I'm like, you, you be the only friends you have now besides your family who's going to, my mother in law and father in law are so down. They're like, please, we're ready to go. Oh, really? They're coming with us. Yeah. So her friends, but she, for her friends now, like she has friends from you know she grew up with here, but they see each other sporadically. But her friends are from the mom group of my kids' friends. Well, there's moms out there. Yeah, I'm sure they're dope. I think I have I have so because I went to college in Texas. I have so many friends, and Austin is a place that my wife and I over the past two years have hired real estate agents twice. Yeah. I mean, we this isn't the we we've been talking about leaving for a while. Yeah. I never have to. We have. I thought I would die. Even if I moved out, I want my ashes spread amongst Topanga Canyon or Laurel Canyon. Yeah. Yeah. It, you, there's but no saying the other, you might not come back. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Like you, sometimes you get caught in your head and you're like, even if two years, you're like, I just don't feel you can come back. Yeah. No, you can. Listen, it's not saying, and truth of the matter is, if you're asking me, I think in two a year, two years would be a better time to buy a house or rebuy a house or whatever you're yeah. doing than it is right now. But yeah. Nashville... I got a lot cool. of friends. Theo's, 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 you know, gonna sp- he spent a month out there, and he's he wants to bounce around. So we're banking all these King's thing, and then we have we have the whole schedule mapped out, so we don't miss any episodes. We right. bank episodes, and then if I go to Texas, we have episodes while I'm moving. So it's like, it, that's the thing. The way we've set up our business now, you don't have to live in the Mm-mm. same city. No, you re- be. I mean, what's he gonna do? Do you think he'll fly people in? to guest on his podcast he thinks there's enough talent in nashville for a while and then he'll fly people in and then you know but then we'll I'll keep a studio here in la then we'll both meet in la do king and sting right then he'll be able to bank a couple of guest episodes for his show i'll have to fly out here to film food truck diaries some of the fighters are out here man but you can make it work yeah absolutely we're gonna make it work for sure yeah. dude game more current events or is that it you want some more or you good uh one more one more maybe not give us your I'll best one Okay, I'll do one. Um, was there a sad one, Kat? There was a sad one. No, Probably happened? not. It Jimmy involves Bro- kids. Oh, someone died? Uh, no, I mean, the kids are fine, but oh, that's there a was a truck driver who <laughs> <laughs> died. Um, oh, let's yeah. do yours then, Brendan. You saw this one? What? So it's kind of it, it, confusing. But yeah, so someone's wife was getting attacked by a shark, and then he jumped in and started punching it. In the eye. In the eye? Yeah, he said it was. Uh, he said he saw the shark's head on the wife, and he goes, "I just started punching." It was the eye, just kept fucking socking it, and the shark let go. Also, what happened was he was punching it; it wouldn't let go, and then a surfer paddled in, and he's very heroic and brave. So he, the surfer, jumped on top of the shark while the guy was punching it, and it finally let go. Holy shit! Yeah, the surfer jumped on a shark a to save two people he, he didn't, didn't know. know. Yeah, yeah. That dude's and, a but good the, guy. Did the lady get fucked up? She's gonna be fine, but her leg was injured for sure. I mean, define fine. <laughs> She's not gonna die. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> <laughs> if you get bit by a shark, do you ever go back in the water? I just don't, I don't like. I'm. I don't want to go now. I, yeah, even now with seeing all these attacks, like hard pass. It's take us to Lake Austin. That's why. By the way, you you know, there's that. Um, I think they still have that nude pond or lake down in austin called hippie hollow yeah theo's told me about it hippie austin to me is one of my five favorite cities oh yeah in the great. country so it's nashville both cleveland if cleveland had texas or california weather i'd move there i but cleveland's definitely not in my top five 
No, the snow. Yeah, yeah I, don't I can't know. do yeah. Nashville, Austin. Man, I love me a Chicago too. Chicago winners, I can't do that food though. Yeah, I agree. Top notch. pizza, pizza like a motherfucker. So is that it? If you want more, we got more. Yeah. <laughs> it's up to you. Well, Chin's like, get me out of yeah. here. Yeah, that's fine. Me and you run long, huh? We got a lot to talk about. <laughs> I dude. know, buddy. I feel I'm like sorry. You just no, don't be sorry. I'm chatting your ear off, man. No, this was fun, man. I, you know, I'm always interesting interested to talk to people about parenting because it's such a the young listeners like come on but dude i'm telling you there's a lot of parents out there yeah but but it's but it's so interesting to he to hear different people's styles and your style is directly affected by how you were raised yes so that's why it's fascinating to me to see what people some people the dynamics are so yeah, weird yeah dude yeah, i'm so yeah. scared of my son being scared of me because i'm such a big dude you know but 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 it, it has nothing to do with your size. That's all he knows. It has to do with who you are. Yes. Do you make him scared of you? Yep. No. And that's it. And if yeah. you don't, then he won't be. No, he's scared of his mom, who's 5'4". Yeah, yeah, see? 5'6". See, like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that's the thing. Like, th they're scared of the person that makes them scared of. But yep. you, dude, come on, man. You're not going to. And by the way, you're too big to be spanking somebody. Oh, I know. Well, I mean, <laughs> I, I couldn't do it. What the fuck? How would you know? I know. You wouldn't know. Yeah, you're too yeah. Right, you dude. would spank someone's asshole through their mouth. Uh, yeah, <laughs> then he'd be terrified. <laughs> then he calls the cops. He grabs his mom's iPhone. Yeah, He's yeah. like, hey, dad did this. Dad did what? He'd definitely tell you then. <laughs> All right, brother. We love you, man. Thanks, uh, dude. Your date got canceled, he said. Date and Boise got canceled, guys. But My Irvine date got canceled. Um, Come check out the High Live. Yes. It's it's people are tuning in. Yeah, brother. dude. My and your boy said he'd come on. Matt Barnes. Matt Barnes. My favorite super people. excited man. He's a brilliant. I man. got a dude named Dopa's Yola coming on next week. He's amazing. But it's just me in my backyard smoking weed, sometimes taking mushrooms on Monday nights at seven o'clock on my Facebook fan page. This is fun and weird. Tune in, man. Well, we love you. Thanks for doing this, dude, brother. You're the man. You're the Thank best. you so much. We're out.